What is up, you betas? Welcome back to the Burke and Betas podcast. Today, we are talking about the Halloween movies. We watched Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills. And now we are here to give our thoughts on that. Jared and I watched Halloween Ends, so we might talk a little bit about that. We won't give spoilers. In our second section, we're going to be ranking horror movie villains. And uh, that should be really fun, so stick around for that as well at the end. I have some interesting takes, and Jared apparently does too. Tom doesn't have any interesting takes, according to him. Uh, Very normal takes. By the way, if you're not sure what this podcast is, uh, we review movies here based on your recommendations and also just some that are seasonally appropriate, like the Halloween movies, as it is spooky season. We watch the movies every week and then we talk about it here and we discuss what we love more often, what we hate about these movies. I want to I want to uh, preface everything by saying uh, for this whole podcast, Jared actually wrote all my lines. But if mm-hmm. I say anything mm-hmm. cancelable, that's kind of on him. Yeah, yeah. And Burke's the one who told me to write those lines, so. Yeah, it was all bullets, you know, just like bulleted, bullet ties. He he wrote the actual script for all of us, so uh, Jared's the script Jared's writer, the one who, yeah. Jared gave it to me. I don't, I don't know what happened to that. Yeah. I have it right here below me. Yeah, yeah if, it, if it ever sounds totally uncoordinated, that's just on the script, really, not on not on us. Totally not scripting this. Definitely script scripted. Uh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, we watched Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills 2021, uh, both parts of the Halloween trilogy, uh, which it's, is it a trilogy? Because I guess th- there's also like... It's a fourology because it's, it, it counts the first one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it basically, I mean, how many Halloween movies have there been up until this point? Uh, <laughs> like 600. Uh, like, yeah, like this is a weird thing with a lot of horror franchises where like especially these classic ones where they they make the first like seven or eight and then in the in like the, starting in like the 2010s they're like no this is the real true sequel to the first one the other ones aren't canon like i'm pretty sure like every Star Wars. horror franchise halloween is halloween has done that like twice already where they're like all right reboot the other things aren't canon except for like the first two they did it again and now they're doing it again yeah so they have so i remember when i was like younger i watched all like halloween one through five i had like there was a marathon and on like a saturday and i didn't expect to do this this that saturday but it was playing and i just sat there and watched all five so just for recap there's halloween 1978 the original halloween movie which is the basis of this trilogy then there's halloween two three four and five all coming out between 81 and 89 uh then there's halloween the curse uh there's h20 uh which is that's also the one i watched in that one it's like yeah. the only one i watched that's 1998 halloween resurrection in 2002 halloween just halloween so so apparently having halloween as the rebranded original to the trilogy is not also not new uh because they did that back in 2007 was and that, followed that like it up Rob with Zombies. halloween 2 yeah, so so there's been uh, three iterations of attempted <laughs> franchises of Halloween, and then there were also like side, also not canon Halloween movies. But the only ones that matter is Halloween 1978, according to the new director. Until this is rebooted in another like ten years. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll be waiting. Until then, the only ones that mattered is Halloween 1978, Halloween 2018, and Halloween 2021, and then the one that came out this month, which is Halloween Ends. Uh, yeah, the one from last week. Yeah, the one from literally last week. And so, <laughs> yeah, we'll just jump in to our thoughts. We're going to go the same strategy we go every time, which is we're going to read plot summary of both. We're going to go a little faster through these because there's two movies. Uh, a little Tried double feature for you today. Uh, also, we are two men down. Uh, they said, and I quote, I can't find the first one on streaming services and I'm not paying $3 to rent it. So that's uh, that's not what they said. But yeah, I, I, I can only $4 assume, I can only assume the first that one. that was the reason they didn't come is because it's it. Listen, money's money's scarce these days. And bro, there was a there was like a Fubo app on like Fire Stick. It's like, oh, free on Fubu Halloween. And it says <laughs> it's that one. It's the 2018 one. But when you click it, that's and it does Fubo all the ads. It. it does all the ads. It's the very first Halloween. So it tricked me. And I did it. I was like, did I do it wrong? I was thinking maybe they were doing this retro thing. We're like, we're just going to have the exact same 
opening, but no, it was the first movie. This is the thing about streaming platforms that makes me mad is you literally have like the franchise should all be in one place. It makes me mad when I, when like it's Halloween, like I get it. If like all the Halloween movies aren't catalog, cataloged one place, but why is it if Halloween kills is on HBO max Halloween 2018, is it also there? And I have to, and it's not on any streaming service. It's like so weird. Uh, but yeah, so, so well, it's uh, not for free on any streaming. That's true. Technically it's on Amazon Rented. prime. And uh, and Amazon Prime I, doesn't I, make it re- make you remember your credit cards attached. Yeah, so you can just click yeah. rent. It's easy. Yeah, I saw them back <laughs> in theaters last week because they put them both back in theaters uh, before Halloween ends came out. And this is my first time seeing all of these movies. Yeah, so let's just jump into that then. Uh, this was not my first time. I've I watched unfortunately Halloween Kills in theaters, and while. <laughs> Uh, my wife and our friend were the, so loud in that theater <laughs> because of how funny it was to them. Uh, I hated that movie, but I will. Uh, so I actually, I'll just, I'll give my thoughts first. I liked Halloween 2018 and I thought it was a pretty unique at the time, uh, take on the, like, what, what is the name for that? Right. The, you know, they're bringing back the old IP with like legacy, right? It's a, it's a good uh, legacy story that they're bringing back. It was pretty interesting take on it. I thought the writing wasn't totally abysmal for a horror movie for the, for 2018 Halloween kills was, um, yeah, not a great sequel to that. And then I will, uh, give my thoughts on the finale uh, of the trilogy later after we're done talking about these movies. But uh, Jared, what do you think of these first two movies? Uh, so Halloween 2018 is, I think it's all, all, all right. I think with, with slashers in general, it's diminishing returns with each, uh, each installment of the franchise. Cause yeah, you're, you're kind of run out of ideas. You're doing the same thing. And at some point it gets ridiculous. So like how, how are these two people still, fucking going at it after yeah. <laughs> all this time. how is one of them not dead already i think like the scream franchise kind of gets away with it because it's kind of also a satire a, a, a satire and but also a legitimate slasher but like the rest of them not not so much but yeah like it's a it's a decent decent slasher film with uh good michael myers moments um as a horror film there are some effective jump scares even though i'm not a big fan uh, of those particular, yeah, uh, the first one's fine. Halloween Kills is terrible. Um, I'm just gonna rip that band aid right off. <laughs> uh, um, it was, I Burke had, I remember Burke talking about it last year when he saw it, saying how bad it was. I'm like, yeah, okay. I'm like, the only thing I knew going into it was that people say evil dies tonight a lot, and in honor of it that, does, I'm also tonight. going to say it several times throughout the recording of this video. Um, evil but, does die tonight, they definitely. I I guess it uh it tries to say something. <laughs> I guess it tries to say something about <laughs> mob justice, but uh ends up being just a very stupid movie. Um and uh at, same as Burke, I will save my thoughts for Halloween ends uh towards the latter part of the video. But now on to you, Thomas. Okay, uh, both these movies are pretty uniquely terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're just like. For like a slasher, it's not like very creative. It's just kind of he literally just stabs everyone to death. Yeah, it's his like main move. It's not there's not like tension in it either. They're not like people like you. People die really fast, like just almost immediately. Yeah. But in terms of like, there's like I don't know. Except like, when they don't. <laughs> Except when they get stabbed a billion times and just are alive for an unreasonably long time. <laughs> I thought the music was kind of cool. Characters weren't like so stupid, but they're just like. I'll just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween Kills makes it a lot stupider, but like the first one, at least they're like not hateable. But, yeah, uh, it it just it's so it's like what it felt like to me is when they have this old movie IP and then the fucking sci-fi channel would yeah. make like a sequel randomly, <laughs> and it would just it would just like venerate like the monster in it, like the legendary Night Stabber, which is essentially what they did with this, and it's just like. Oh, Michael, we're all thinking about him all the time. They really harped on, like, the boogeyman in these. Yeah. And, like, 
oh my god which when we get to halloween kills uh that is my first notes <laughs> <laughs> why couldn't they just call him the shape like why could they, they said it in the first one why couldn't they just hey hey he is credited as a shape i will have you know as the yeah, shape but they say the shape too that's like what he's what the actual monster is supposed to be called yeah. the shape but oh. it they, they do they even, not say even catch it the that first... Uh, I don't know. It just doesn't... It's because they always call Michael Myers or the Boogeyman. <laughs> yeah, literally. And she always calls him. Uh, yeah, she always calls him My- Michael. Lori's like Michael. Yeah, Michael. Like it's yeah, like your like weird. freaking like son or something. <laughs> she's <laughs> on that level with him. Yeah, she's very... well, well. Well, in the old canon, uh, they were siblings. Wait, what? True. Yeah, one yeah. of the cat. Yeah, it was oh, like sorry. the. It's from like two, right? Then they're like established that she's like his long lost sister. And then they say that's why he's always hot. But since that, that part's not Ken, he just, well, I guess we'll get into that, but that's yeah. it's not really what the case. <laughs> yeah. So we'll start right into it. Uh, 40 years, this is Halloween 2018, 40 years after Haddonfield murders in 1978, two journalists, Aaron Corey and Dana Haynes, who... Pause. I instant, within one minute of the movie, first two notes I had were, I already hate these characters. I hope the podcasters die first. <laughs> And it's like honestly, they are mostly irrelevant. In- yeah, <laughs> that's what was- yeah. Like, that's why everyone dies so fast. There's no tension with these characters. Yeah, They're like off immediately. All the attention is supposed to be on like the final girl, right? Which, like, if you don't know the final girl, it's a you know horror movie trope of the last girl that's always survives in a movie. Um, which okay, wait. Real side note: uh, if anyone follows Straw Hat Goofy on TikTok. Uh, he was talking about one of his favorite scenes in a movie. There's a movie currently in theaters right now. Uh, it's a sequel. Uh, oh, my gosh. Sequel in theaters. I'm going to blank on this name, uh, so I'm just looking it up. Wait, it's in theaters now? It's Terrifier, okay? And oh, I've, I think I saw the first one. So I have not seen the first one, but he put a clip from the first one, which is the funniest thing I've ever seen just from this clip. And it's basically – it's this horror movie like – He's he's tacking this like the final girl and so the and the final girl is like like stabs him a bunch of times and he like falls over and she's like stand up stand up and is like standing off with him and he looks hurt and stuff and then he just like strikes a pose and shoots her and pulls a gun out of nowhere <laughs> and just shoots her in the stomach and it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> there are, I, I think there see... are other funny parts of that movie. Yeah, I've heard that they're like very graphic, very kind of gross in the sense of like gory. Um, but man, that made me want to watch that movie more than any scene has ever. Uh, so I might have to watch uh, those two while they're in theaters. Uh, but yeah, so the, uh, that was just a side note. Um, there's nothing like that in these movies. Actually, there is one scene in Halloween Kills that's as as funny as that. Um, anyway. Uh, so yeah, these podcasters, I don't know, like they were there kind of just to be like, this is who Michael Myers is for everybody in the yeah. audience that doesn't yeah. know who Michael Myers is. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, he's, he voices Shrek. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. This is oh, I was so confused tactic. as a kid. I was so confused were as they, a kid. They make it seem <laughs> well, like, <laughs> well, well, Tom, what, did Michael kinda... Ma- what did Shrek voice do? <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> this guy's Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it like, when does he take his mask off and reveal that he's an actor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. Is, before, before he stabs Lori one more time, he takes it off. Like, yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Groovy. <laughs> so, yeah, then we're introduced to Dan- Dr. Samuel Loomis. Um, Don't get such, such a memeable character. Samuel, uh, like, Samuel Loomis is like, they always have that, like, interested scientist. I want to know more about my subject. Like, he talks in such a weird voice. Um, no, that's not Loomis. It wasn't Loomis. Oh, that's not yeah, Loomis. Loomis is, Loomis is the guy, the doctor from the original, the original movie. Oh, uh, okay. I'm reading this. This is well, like I'm his going student ahead or something. With it. Dr. Rambeer <laughs> Sarte. <laughs> reading the Halloween 1978 <laughs> On the wrong movie. Um, no, so, oh, yeah, because they have the, in, that's right. They have the, um, they have the little prequel yeah. shot. Uh, yeah, do, is it Dr. Ram Rambeer Sartain? Yeah. yeah. Do- Michael's new psychiatrist after Dr. Loomis's death. Right. I'm I'm a little ahead. Which Dr. Loomis is also a memeable character. He's the one that's like uh he says in the second movie, he's like 
<laughs> Which I'm jumping a little bit ahead just because how funny it is. What happened in here? Did Michael <laughs> kill? Did Michael <laughs> kill again? <laughs> yeah, didn't he? He already killed like five people. Yeah, again. Yeah. It's so funny. Did he kill one more? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Did he kill an additional person? <laughs> Tack it on to the list. The ever growing uh, one. My notes. Uh, like <laughs> likes to kill more than five. Yeah. It turns. Yeah. It turns out five was not his limit. <laughs> we know that now uh, for science. <laughs> Uh, they, he informs them. Uh, so Dr. Rambeer Sartain informs, uh, Michael, uh, that Michael is able to speak, but chooses not to Dana records the events of, and Aaron approaches Michael and talks to him. I love the whole tie your shoes thing because it would have been really, really funny if they just opened this movie up with him tripping into this, into the, into the area and him just snapping his neck and be like, yeah, yeah that's why we don't do that. <laughs> yeah, they should they should have done that. It's basically what it, that's basically they only how the movie like is. A little bit more screen time. They but. might as well have had him break out for that reason, pull out a bone and like cut his chains up or something. I mean, yeah. That's basically the pace of the way this movie goes. It wouldn't have been shocking. Um, yeah, even after showing him his mask and mentoring, mentioning Laurie, he doesn't really respond. But it kind of implied that he's like you could tell based to the on the camera angles and stuff that he's like he's intentionally listening. Uh, the two journalists leave and then they bully Laurie. Um, heavily, they go to her heavily fortified and decrepit homestead and bribe her for an interview for three thousand dollars. They're starting a podcast for three thousand. I don't think so. Um, listen, guys, I'm not gonna ever pay you guys three thousand. Well, they were already award winning pod. They were award winning. Yes. No. Yes. No, yes. Were. That's what they said. That's what they said. They were already. They won awards. I swear. I really I just. Swear <laughs> I really just thought they were beginner podcasts. No, they were like, like. Also, he's he's recording while he's driving, like it just freehanding his like recorder. Like that's picking up all types of background audio. Yeah, I know they're true. journalists. I don't know. They don't seem like very good journalists. <laughs> Let's provoke this violent criminal for journalism. <laughs> <laughs> You want to, you want to chase Laurie Strode and get the one that got away, don't you? No, he fucking doesn't. He wants to go home. <laughs> yeah, like there's no. That's the other interesting thing too. Is it's like yeah, Laurie kind of shoehorns herself into all of yeah. this conflict. It doesn't seem like in the first movie it does kind of seem like he's going after her, like in in 2018. But like it, only maybe like only provoked. I mean, not like, not even not even then. Like everyone else is like he's going for Laurie and the 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 his. Dr. Satine, whatever, starts taking him to, to Lori's house later in the film is like, this will get you to talk. This will get you to go. Yeah, like it's kind Lori's of like... prepared. Lori, Lori also thinks that he's going to come for him, but he's really not. <laughs> Everyone just assumes he is. I mean, yeah. they bring that up, I guess. Yeah, later. it's it's very weird. Uh, anyway, they're there. Uh, she's been spending the last 48, 40 years dealing with PTSD, preparing for Michael's inevitable return, which if he's been locked up for 40 years... <laughs> She, how is like, listen, As if an old she, had, man, if, a, if he had died man. of old age, we would have looked back on her reaction to this as totally non like circumstantial. Also, like she, like, I got to remember the 1978 version a little bit, but like, we really don't start seeing him being like unkillable until the sequels. So like we were like in the second movie, he does get in the second original second Halloween movie. He does get set on fire and like walks out of the fire. So, but they didn't like iconize him as like this unkillable being until like after the first movie in 1978. So yeah. it's really funny to me that like they use kind of his legacy that was established in the other movies to, yeah. to yeah. explain that when like if it was just the conflicts of the first movie. As far as we know, he's just this creepy serial killer that ha yeah. is pretty normal that was, like, arrested and, like, put in a psychiatric hospital. Like, like obviously horror, but, like, she should have been just viewed as, like, as insane as she... Like, she was actually insane. She just ended up being affirmed by the fact that he had supernatural abilities that were only shown in this movie. <laughs> Vague, vaguely yeah, she wouldn't have known. Like, she ha would not have known that he has, like... Which is, like... It does shed a little bit more light on like, oh, why didn't you kill him in like so severely after the first movie? Like, well, fire doesn't do it. Like, we only know that from the sequels that like fire clearly is not going to kill him because it didn't in those movies. Uh, but it does seem like they in Halloween Kills, they really harp on like his supernatural abilities. Yeah, even, they ham it up way like, more. Way more. 
Oh, just you wait till Halloween ends. Then. Yeah. So, so here. Oh we, boy. Yeah. So here we go. Um. Yeah. Basically, he's been fortifying this. They talk about how he lost. She lost her custody of her daughter. Makes sense. Um. Aaron and Dana tell Lori are interested in finding out why Michael committed the murders in 1978. Ask her to meet with them in a final attempt to get him to speak before he's transferred to maximum security prison. First of all, how is that? That doesn't necessarily mean that's the last. Uh, opportunity to speak with them but that's a whole different thing um lori kicks them out makes sense because they're literally just berating her and being like yeah you lost your yeah. daughter what's that like like okay maybe it's time him. for you to go i'll take my 3k now um then obviously uh, who 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 is like did they ever bring up other like who well she's the, divorced like, she's twice divorced which we can only assume is because she's literally insane yeah like always um, holding herself up yeah like She's always trying like, to shove that activity of yogurt into my face. <laughs> She's trying to get him to like be like mini soldiers, like her daughter and stuff. Like I, that makes sense, yeah. But it doesn't. It, what doesn't make sense is yeah. Like she has a daughter. Why isn't the daughter going to live? Is it implied that he went? Maybe she did go. I off guess to live they, with the yeah. Dad, she right. Like I, lives it, with the dad they said that dead. like yeah. Okay. I, I guess the way they phrased it made it sound like she got put into foster care or something because she was like, the, you know. They took her away from her mom, but I guess that would make sense. That would go with the dad. Anyway, um, as the transport's being prepared and patients slow to the bus, uh, Dr. Sartain insists on accompanying Michael as the bus departs. So is it implied that he lets them loose? Like he's a, responsible for the derailment of the bus? Is that what? That could be. That could we never be true, see, actually. Because we never see the ramifications of why the bus, like, which w in, would explain the reveal later as he, like, that would make like, a lot of sense. So, so also, that, this so is like sense. the most generic way to like set up the the plot. It's like the police, like the the you know the prison bus crash. Now the psychos are out. Yeah, and like, <laughs> and they're like, let's just do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I noticed these movies don't really handle um, sensitive topics very well, like the mentally ill or like oh yeah, uh, <laughs> or like even like racial discussions like in halloween ends like they they tokenized a lot of the black people in that movie and it was really weird uh but that was my observation um yeah these movies yeah. don't handle a lot of that very well uh they, a lot of movies anyway yeah but I guess the horror movies especially do horror that, movies especially like, because i guess crazy like, people that are always like criminals right and they tokenize kind of everyone in horror movies like in almost intentionally so i guess that like but I don't know. It feels a, it feels especially weird with like how they handled like the mentally ill and these first two movies and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so he escapes and then they had this like weird, you know, the kids driving or, with his dad about and he's talking about he wants to go to dance class. And you like there had to have been an extended version of that scene because there that scene didn't make any sense why we had to listen to this kid talk to his dad about why he wanted to go to dance instead of hunting with his dad. Um, this movie does that a lot where they'll have like characters kind of like exposition, like give a lot of background on them, but then die almost immediately. Right. It seems like oh, the, they gotta, the they intention. Gotta get you attached. Yeah. It's meant to humanize <laughs> the characters attached. in the five seconds that we, which is why like I would rather have a horror movie build like a, a bigger cast in the beginning, like spend a good chunk. And that way we feel like we're like losing some of that. Yeah, I know. Matters. Like, there's tension with the characters. Like, Oh, don't kill me. It's dance class. Michael. Literally. Oh. Yeah. I'm like, I see a kid and I see the kid and his dad. I'm like, Oh, they're both dead. Okay. This is that's This is the scene. They were introduced this scene. It's a Halloween movie. Therefore they die this scene. <laughs> so like that is the, that is the line of events for, for her like Halloween movie side characters. <laughs> yeah. Introduction dead <laughs> their direction were like oh say something like believable but really unique <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and uh since we're at the bus crash now it means we passed over uh kind of uh the most important line of dialogue in the movie which comes when we meet uh karen Lori's daughter uh and her family and uh while her husband is at the island in the kitchen <laughs> utters the line i got peanut butter on my penis <laughs> <laughs> The dad's not a bad character. I the like dad him. is not a bad character. That's why they had to kill him off. Uh, can't have good characters. <laughs> and they um, kill him so fast. He's just like <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Got him. That's another thing I need to get to later uh, when we get to that point. Um, so at the transport, uh, yeah, we have that. Have Laurie's granddaughter and Karen's daughter, Allison, walking to school with two friends. Tells them stress of her family uh, indoors due to her grandmother's past. So they're just like and all dealing with scene, it. 
in this scene they reference the continuity of like yeah people debunks saying, the town oh, isn't rumor, that the yeah. monster isn't that the um isn't like he or her your mom's brother or whatever and she's like no that was just a myth which like, is interesting which which could be kind of cool if you like if they it would have been cool if they like mythologized the sequels the previous sequels as being like just made up rumors about what happened uh yeah like like that's a cool that's a cool that would be a cool way to look at it be like oh like these are all just stories people made up only the five were killed by michael or something like that which could like i don't know it would would be interesting to see it that way um in class allison looks out the window to see Lori watching her uh she was similar to michael the way michael stalks people (laughs) uh she which is cool i do like how they parallel like Lori being a monster the monster that michael made her kind of thing uh which they kind of just did in this movie and then immediately abandoned uh well they the kind of the tried movies. to do it with like all the characters i guess they turned into the angry mom yeah but it's but like it, it, seemed it doesn't like work Laurie, as well it seemed like Laurie was meant to be like this uh like counterpart like the other side the yin to like michael's yang kind of thing uh and yeah. they leaned into it in the first movie and then abandoned it in the second and i will be honest with you in the third pretty much as well um <laughs> and <laughs> but anyway uh, in class, yeah, we see her, and then they obviously the the mom didn't lied about inviting her to uh, Lori to the family dinner, and obviously um, the daughter's which one? I always get the names Karen, and then Dana's Karen. the daughter. No, it's, uh, Karen, Karen is Lori's daughter. Allison, 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 Allison right? Oh, so Dana Allison, and Aaron are the friends. Allison always calls Lori grandmother. It's like mom, dad, yeah. grandmother, always, <laughs> nothing else. They couldn't have like the scriptwriter couldn't have like given one of the like regional type like grandma nicknames that people give. Like, isn't Why that's is a regional thing, grandma? Right? Like, yeah, like grandmother, please. <laughs> Suddenly, very formal. <laughs> Granddaughter. Um, yeah. So that was weird. Uh, yeah, the bus crashed. We see the security guards were killed. The inmates were scattered around the roads, which was weird. Yeah, upon um, coming across a crash that uh, people who are obviously prisoners, uh, the gentleman exits the car and leaves his son alone and is never seen from again. <laughs> did we people in these movies are dumb. Do we? Oh, do we even see his body? I don't remember because I, th- the I thought body it was like I... against the wheel. Oh yeah, okay. Stuff. I think that's right. Might have yeah. been him. And then, and then the kid, and this is the funniest thing. And I feel like horror movies do this intentionally just to show, like, I, I, I feel like this is, it's always like a gun control debate that they are, that ho- these horror movie directors are making, which is like in this movie is the exact opposite message, except for when it comes to this kid, because I, it's, <laughs> it's my favorite thing. in in whenever I see it in a horror movie is when a kid accidentally shoots the wrong person. Cause it doesn't just happen in this movie. I've seen it in multiple horror movies and it's always hilarious. He's like, Oh, you started with <laughs> just like shoots him. And it's it just, the it's, it always just gets me because it's just like, bro, like why are you leaving this kid with a gun in the car? Like he did kind of like spook him. He's like, don't shoot. But like, <laughs> yeah, like the most like a monster he could. And that, well, that kid was ready to shoot. Like he didn't even know this yeah, was yeah. a scene he needed to be shooting at. He was, he was ready. <laughs> It was like he saw the dead body on the ground and his first instinct was like, you okay? <laughs> You're not about to be. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so we see uh, basically the fatally wounded security guard tells him to run. He investigates the bus and is startled by Dr. Sartain shooting him uh, in the shoulder accidentally fleeing back to the truck. He calls the police. Michael appears in the back seat and kills him, which until then I was like, oh, I didn't know Michael killed kids, but I guess that makes sense. Um, only some kids. And when you watch Halloween kills, kills kid, only really. some kids. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit. Maybe he just needed no, the car, he, you know. He kills. I guess. I guess he, he kills other teenagers, but I guess it's Michael's like I'm a lot of kills. things. I'm not a kid killer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't kill the baby later. Yeah, he seems to be fine with babies. So, yeah, yeah. kind of screws it over. Though. I yeah, definitely leaves it in a bad position. Uh, he, the, he he knows that. The following He's morning, like, Sheriff Frank Hawkins, our uh, the other legacy character, ex- at least. I think he's a made up legacy character, right? Like he's like in t- like he's not in the actual originals or am I wrong? I don't I, I, don't, I don't think, think so. Uh, I I pulled it up a, a, a qu- the quick Wikipedia article here for the first movie. I don't see uh Frank So Hawkins pull up the here. pull up the Halloween wiki. <laughs> yeah, but uh you're right. They do treat it I guess because even though he wasn't in the first movie like they treat him as if he was, you know, a member 
Oh, right. The, he was, uh, he was there. Who was there? Because <clears throat> in the, By the way, Frank yeah. Hawkins <laughs> gets less and less to do as these movies go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor <He's>, guy. <laughs> I, I was about to do a, say a spoiler as a joke, and I'm going to hold off. <laughs> I'll tell you that one in private. There's right probably here. going to be loose, uh, you know, some spoilers Wait, flying around. Actually, Halloween ends <laughs> in this. So, I'm, you know, we should have given that warning out. At the beginning, I don't think we're going to. Sp- I'm not intending care. to spoil or ho- I don't want to spoil Halloween ends for people. I think we should. I think we should avoid the spoiler territory. Uh, well, um, spoiler alert. But it's I'm fucking gonna, terrible. That's it. Yeah. We'll give our review at the end, but a non-spoiler review. I was going to say, uh, but I'm going to text you a joke, Jared, just so you can laugh on screen. Um, you guys are so mean. This is actually bullying. This is what bullying deliberately leaping me out. This is a PSA for that's actually right. Really yeah, I, I messaged you the joke, and I think, I'm I, just I think bullying Tom. Um. <laughs> anyway, um. <laughs> I all right. It was kind of funny. You didn't have this. I, I holding in your laughter is fine. He muted his mic. If you're if you're listening to it, he muted his mic and is cracking up hysterically yeah. right now. If you're watching on video, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if if there's a you black, can't... if there's a black, wait. I'll just I'll put a black. You can't see square his, over his, his hands, but he's he's smacking yeah. his stomach out of laughing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> holding holding his sides, you can't Roll see it. It's rolling too low. over on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually the floor behind him. The chair is like on the ground. Yeah, <laughs> hammers above him. So uh, yeah, so then he shows up and he clearly wants his mask back, which is the only reason that the. This is seemingly the only reason the podcasters exist is to give us ex- like exposition and then get the mask into Michael's hands, right? Uh, he they arrive at the gas station and then he just kills them at the gas station, uh, and then uh, in yeah, basically they find the deserted gas station because he's killed everyone in there. There's a scene of him stabbing someone in, in the background, which is funny to me. Um, he kills them both, and then he gets his mask back from their car, putting it on. Lori learns about the transport crash and breaks into Karen's house to demonstrate her lack of security, wielding a gun, which the <laughs> their her husband is understandably like, why are you pointing a gun at me? <laughs> um, and then obviously they kick Lori out. Uh, she heads to the gas station to witness the bodies of Aaron and Dana being recovered. On Halloween night, Michael wanders past a populated street in Haddonfield littered with families of children trick-or-treating. He finds his way uh, into a shed behind the house and takes a hammer before going inside to kill the sole occupant. He replaces the hammer with a kitchen knife. Classic. He has to get his kitchen knife somewhere, and it can't be any of the main characters' he, he's house. Playing, he's play, he's, it's like he's playing a gun game. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> 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 that one. <laughs> And then he upgrades to the light fixture uh, later. <laughs> it's so funny because his Michael Myers style of killing is so erratic. Like every like, you know, serial killers have like MOs and this guy just does not. He does not have any seeming MO other than like whatever he stumbles across. And then he'll have a knife, but he'll be like, today I kind of want to bash a head in with a hammer. Oh, I'm actually really feeling a light fixture stabbing. Oh, by the way, my screen behind me is uh, Michael Myers. He's feeling a little stabby today. Uh, so if I ever, I think this is probably the first time I've leaned away and actually revealed that he's kind of peering behind me. Um, yeah, Bur- he's behind you. Watch out. Shit. Um, you got Hanfield, Indiana, not Hanfield, New Jersey behind you. Oh, okay. If it was New Jersey. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, he's closer than you. Should have edited it in Haddonfield, New Jersey. He has the ability. With, with he has one extra superpower, out. which is to teleport between Haddonfields. <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah, he kills with a hammer, and then he grabs his knife, the knife. Very interesting. Killing another woman by stabbing her through the throat. Got a season in that thing before you go for the main characters. Allison is at a school-sanctioned Halloween party with her friends. Receives a call from Vicky inviting her to come home one uh, Come over once Julian, the kid's babysitting, falls asleep, which is the funniest kid, funniest character uh, in the ca- entire best character, trilogy. Best character yes. in, <laughs> yeah, I, I will agree to that. Best character in all, all three of them. I was cracking up with this kid's line. Well, I, yeah. Something weird about the movies is actually they kind of feel like, especially the first one, it's like they were kind of going for more like a horror comedy. Fun. There are like a lot of jokes in yeah. the movie. <laughs> yeah, by the way, like, if I don't... they doubled down, I think it would have been a good movie. Double yep. down on a horror comedy. By the way, I don't remember if I told you this. I was talking to you about this on the podcast or off the podcast last time we recorded. But I mentioned Courtney Cox being in the second one. And I totally blended that with Scream. Because in Scream, she's the like final girl. That's like the sequ- the legacy oh, yeah, character. She- <laughs> but there's a black haired girl that looks not too dissimilar from her that's in this movie. And it confused me. 
Um, oh, I see. Which yeah, is, yeah, she wasn't. She does not show up. Yeah, she is not in this movie. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, I said that, and I don't remember if it was on or off the podcast. But I realized my mistake as I was watching. I'm like, oh wait, that's in Scream, because uh, Scream was basically this movie's plot, but as a comedy, um, a little bit more. So anyway, we have uh, yeah, they're they're she's babysitting this kid. Uh, she falls asleep. Allison gets into an altercation with her boyfriend, Cameron, who uh, throws her phone into Cheese Whiz or something. By the way. Some kind of jelly. Yeah. Uh, some kind of jelly. After, or after, he gets, a, after he gets caught kissing another girl. <laughs> Which is like no context. There was no build up to him like doing that anyway. Like there wasn't implied. It wasn't implied that he was a dick or anything like that. It just randomly happened that he was kissing this girl. And then we're not sure if it was like she kissed him and he was like, oh, I didn't want to be like, we don't know. And so like, but then he doubles down and is like, well, he I'm going to throw denying. your freaking phone in, in cheese. What are you going to do about that now? You going to pick that up? I'm like, okay, he full tilt went villain mode here <laughs> and is totally for, and then Joker disappears moment. for the rest of the movie is oh, yeah. just and then, gone. And, and it's something that gets brushed over in like three whole lines of dialogue in the next movie. <laughs> yeah. Like immediately, immediately forgiven, which granted, uh, between what those happened? events, there are big, a there lot are bigger things happens. happening. <laughs> it's true. Um, but they it doesn't make them think any smarter. But anyway, uh, yeah. So he throws her phone in, in throws her phone in like cheese or something. Uh, as call, <laughs> Lori's warning her to come home, so they she obviously doesn't get the call. At Julian's house, he tells Vicky he saw a masked man standing in the doorway, but Vicky dismisses that as his imagination and puts Julian to bed as her, uh, as her boyfriend Dave. He also called the kid also calls it the boogeyman, which is also like how. You know, is everyone throwing around the word boogeyman? Because if I saw a man in a mask, I'd be like, there's a creepy dude. I would not be like boogeyman, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, as Vicky checks the closet, Julian's request, he opens the door, is attacked by Michael. Uh, funniest, that is the uh, oh, funniest shit. thing, is oh, just shit. a kid being like, oh shit, and then just like running away, away, which is like the only response. And it's great. He does kind of come back, but then he's like leaving again. Oh like, my god. Right, I I can, you know what? There's nothing I can do here. And then we don't see this kid really ever again. Um, maybe. What I really oh, hope we, we is see him at a certain he's in the second Halloween one. Ends. Yeah. Oh right. Or, he's in Halloween. He's in Halloween Kills. I'm like, dude. Yeah, he's like, I really want. I really want to see Julian return as the final guy in like a uh, in a sequel in a new trilogy twenty years from now. <laughs> Halloween really ends. Halloween really. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they did bring back the babysat kid in. Yeah. Uh, Halloween Kills. So yeah, they could do that with Julian. There we go. Um, so yeah, then basically, obviously, those two are killed. Uh, the uh, her two friends v Vicky never addressed friend, yeah. um, by our main characters. Uh, so, really does ever. She ever find out? I don't know. If she she doesn't. Yeah, she doesn't know. I guess she doesn't find out for the first two movies, right? I mean, she doesn't because the third one. Um, I won't spoil, but I will say that there is a little bit of it doesn't lead directly out after, unlike the other two. Uh, so, but I will say that like. Yeah, I don't think she finds out Halloween and Halloween kills, but it's definitely not addressed in Halloween ends. So I don't. Yeah, weird. Uh, very weird. Anyway, uh, yeah, a lot of people in her life die that are not fully addressed. Like her dad is barely talked about uh, in that scene. They have a brief scene in Halloween kills where like the mother, the wife, uh, Karen <laughs> is like rubbing her ring and crying. And then that's it. Uh, no, then they're like, he's always with us, even if. Yeah, every so often he's like, he killed my husbands. <laughs> yeah, like, he it's so weird. Uh, it, it's like, just the way they address everything is like crazy. Uh, Lori patrolling the speed streets in her truck. Here's the dispatch call on her CB radio and hurries to the cows. Where Sheriff, Haw Sheriff Hawkins investigates. I really wish one of them would have gotten shot in that scene. It would be so funny. Uh, just because, like, oh, they start. It's always people startling each other with guns. Ooh. Like, I, I probably would have actually shot someone. Also, That's why also. When Lori arrives on the scene, she sees the reflection of Michael uh, in the house, and when he she goes and he's he's already outside. And this this is a problem with the first movie too, where like Michael was maybe thirty feet away and like hides behind some shrubbery. When they approach, he's gone already. Like, does he just like slowly into away and then like full Usain Bolt? I yes, I can only assume like, he runs <laughs> because at some point, like Halloween kills, he like turns a corner and there's a fence there. The guy's like, oh, he's gone. So he must have just like. Really, like, <laughs> like some kind of like chimpanzee just pulled himself over the fence. Okay, he can tell uh, like he's an old guy too. Like, okay, he yeah! can oh, he can tele he can teleport to other uh to other Haddonfields and within oh, Haddonfields. Right. Oh, so he teleports to one. Yeah, who's that necessary space? To yeah, back exactly. To yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that how 
played the... <laughs> he he teleports to Haddonfield, New Jersey, sprints to the other location, and then teleports. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Problem, Burke. A plot hole with the teleport theory. Uh, why did he just escape prison? Because that wasn't in Haddonfield. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He'd only do it when he's in Haddonfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's between Had- intra Haddonfield. Um, yeah. <laughs> the science is too complex to explain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, they, they miss, they miss shooting at him. Um, which there's a whole funny thing about that in the second movie I need to talk about, but then we go back to Allison ditching her boyfriend at the party, allows her friend Oscar to walk her home. Uh, Allison, like, I, I'm going to say two things about this. One, Oscar cornered her in a dark, uh, park, uh, definitely misunderstood, misread the situation, Oscar, not great looks. Uh, but I will say that like he went in for a kiss and was rejected, but like, then she got like really mad at him. <laughs> like which like i well, think she just broke up with her boyfriend, yeah it was like homie. oscar's kind of like the worst home, yeah like, like ever definitely worst friend but like he also i don't know it was one of those things where it was just like funny to me because like he was like cl- clearly misread the situation like did not read the room and then like she instantly is just like like screw you asshole and just ditches him and i'm like that's kind of fair but also like oscar like probably didn't need to be done that dirty like <laughs> Yeah, and then he dies. <laughs> yeah, like, and it, yeah, and he, yeah, and they just instantly gets like, I, you know, Oscar is just chilling in the backyard. Just Michael really did him dirty. Um, yeah. So then, obviously, he's there. He thinks the neighbor, uh, the person's yard, uh, the person that owns it, is like the one talking to him. But it's actually Mike. Michael kills him by spiking his head on the fence post, pretty much. Uh, and then Allison hears this, sees Michael, takes off, understandably. Uh, and then we see, uh, she finds the police car with Dr. Sartain and Hawkins. Hawkins finds, uh, Michael Myers, runs him over with the SUV. The correct answer gets out and tries to shoot him. Would have done it a little faster. Dr. Sartain stabs him and puts the mask on, which there is this like mythos that the movie is establishing that like the mask has like special powers to it yeah or like, like when, it's the when, mask like, that controls them like when aaron is in the prison holding it up and all the prisoners start like freaking out <laughs> like because you know michael myers is vaguely supernatural yeah and that seems like that does seem like the indication is that the mask is what holds like corrupts and um it's like I, the one ring i will say like <laughs> no one cared who i was until like I put on the this mask. as a trilogy leans into that and i think that oh yeah. and uh i so i, I think that's going to be something that we may or may not see in the future i'll i'll withhold that discussion but uh anyway we have uh dr sartain just kills him and then lifts a very heavy man dr sartain does not look like he is in the best shape to be lifting a dead body, <laughs> a, a, like a probably like 280, 300 pound dude and putting him in the back truck, the back of the Maybe car. the mask did give him superpowers. Yeah, yeah put he, puts on, on, he, he strong does put on the mask. Put Michael in the okay. car. All right, we'll buy takes it. Takes it off. All right, I'm convinced yeah. then. It's um, yeah, and then and then Michael does the funniest thing uh, in, a, in a scene not too far from then, which he just decides not to kill Laurie and instead to kick down kicked down the like barrier between him and the back in the front of the cop car killing dr sartain which was hilarious to me i thought that was the right move uh and then letting her get out letting her get out which i don't know if i just like missed this but like did the back doors suddenly become unlocked or did she climb no, through the no, front she she went through the door that Michael okay kicked open. she went through that yeah. door. okay um yeah it was just very weird that he like it's so funny that michael's like subjectivity to killing people is like so skewed like how he'll just let her leave but kill kill him you know what i'm saying like, it's very weird how he, he what drives him it's the plot that drives him obviously but like what drives him i don't know it's very it's strange um yeah anyway he, yeah well, well well she starts to get away and i think he starts to pursue her but that's a boy but at this point they're so close to Lo- to uh, Lori's house that the cops are stationed outside draw his attention instead right so yeah obviously uh then they, he kills the cops approaches kills uh kills papa and um kills peanut butter penis guy <laughs> yeah uh I don't, I don't remember his name so that's that's the name, that's what he is to me peanut butter papa penis yeah peanut butter peanut, peanut butter penis, <laughs> peanut, peanut, butter peanut, peanut butter penis papa <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter penis papa comes out and uh tries to off- offer coffee to the police officer stationed outside but 
Unlike all the other kills, this is when I get back to him not having a solid MO. He decided that one of these cops should be a lantern. Yeah. And like other kills, oh, yeah. other kills, he'll just neck slash done. Some kills you'll strangle. Some kills he stabs a million times in the back. And then like other times he just decides to make their heads lanterns. What is the, it's like, is it, well, he's, he's kind of an artist, baby. He's, feel, he's feeling the holiday spirit and he didn't have time earlier to be this creative. He had pit kill him to do. And, but this time he had time. Yeah, what it, he was able to take his time. So he's like, "Let me get a little festive for Halloween." He's like, "You know what? This this would look really good. I think I'm out there like this." Like, he, he, he does get really random with it. Like in the in the sequel, uh, when he's uh, killing Lori's neighbor, and like he he puts one knife in his back, and he's like, hmm, and he turns around. He just grabs him, every like, knife off like, the magnetic yes. kitchen set. He's like, he's like "This one would look nice here." This one would look nice here. <laughs> or, or when he kill when he kills the John, he like poses. <laughs> oh, I wanted to talk something about that felt hate crimey. I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't. I'm not gonna fully say. But listen, and and the same theme is carried into Halloween ends, and <laughs> of of some of the murders feeling a little bit like hate crimes. Um, and I'm I'm not gonna. If you saw Halloween ends, maybe you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm just going to say the word DJ, but other than that, um, there is, I don't know, man, there, uh, this Michael Myers might be carrying some biases to, to him. Uh, <laughs> Michael Myers should be canceled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I don't know, I'm, man, I'm gonna, like some of I'm these skills, some of the kills are a little bit more extra than the others. <laughs> I'm just... beginning to suspect this Michael Myers guy isn't a good fella. <laughs> yeah. You know what? He seemed cool up until this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Michael Myers heck? should be charged with murder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so uh, now we're at the point where he is outside of Lori's house. Uh, Lori alerts Karen like to Michael's for, arrival. We're told, except like what pro- it didn't. <laughs> yeah, like, but like what she uh, was like, insanely like, validated by. If yeah. anything, she made this happen because like he would have just killed people around his house. But like sh- they really baited her into that. So. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, where am I in the synopsis? Finding, we're, we're at where, oh, I got, I fell way behind. Well, Michael's at Lori's house. He, he killed the, the cops and made him a jack o' lantern. Yeah. He killed his peanut butter <laughs> so, penis. So, yeah, he, uh, he alerts to the hidden safe room. Uh, Lori tells Karen to, like, barricade down there. And then she locks and barricades the front door. And literally, like, should have known not to stand that close to the glass. Like, she's so prepared, and then almost immediately, everything she prepared for fell apart. Like, almost immediately, she was killed there. Like, and we know that Michael could have easily snapped her neck there because we've seen it happen to so many other characters. Which, like, come on, Michael. You gotta step it up, man. You you gotta, like, you're getting too distracted. He fumbled the bag. He fumbled the bag here. Uh, So, yeah. He, uh, yeah, she takes off two fingers, which... Does he have those fingers in 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 the sequel? No, in he the doesn't. later ones, it'll show us. It shows like I guess someone bandaged his hand. The hand is like wrapped up. <laughs> <laughs> but like, <laughs> we're implying sure that there was up. Michael took some time to like seal his wounds. Maybe that's what he's doing because he like sometimes disappears for a long time and he's just like okay, okay, oh, just okay, you wait. Okay, he's got like a little like lighter. He cauterizes it. He's like. Oh, He's actually doing that to all his wounds. <laughs> oh my god! It just wait, just wait. I wish we were talking about Halloween and spoilers. Uh, Maybe we'll have a, spo- a spoiler six, but I don't want to ruin it for time. I, I so mean, I it, it is on. I think we should hold you on. Out there who have a Peacock Plus or whatever the fuck it's called, <laughs> it is on there. <laughs> we should hold off. We should it's just talk called about Peacock. It. You should do, you should go watch the third, and then maybe we'll have a little spoiler panel. We'll release as a as a little bonus episode. Me and Jared will do or something. Uh, but yeah, there's okay. there's there's a because like, there's so much to say about the the end of this trilogy that like just is added on to all of this weird shit that they're doing. Um, so ba- so basically, um, he forces himself into the home. They uh, they stab each uh, Lauren and Michael stab each other and witnesses. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. And Allison witnesses Lori fall from the balcony when she investigates. Lori is gone and Allison makes her way into the safe room uh, with Karen, who alerts Michael as he appears. Karen shoots him with a rifle and stuns him. Uh, Lori this appears. Is actually, this is actually a good scene. I love that scene where she's like, I can't do it. I can't do I, it. Gotcha. Hey, 
Gotcha, motherfucker. Gotcha. Which would have yeah, been great, like, but if I remember correctly, it was in every single trailer for this movie. So I'm pretty sure I knew that scene was coming when it happened. Because mm. I'm, I'm pretty sure they played that scene in the movie. Uh, but but uh, but I'm not 100% on that. Uh, yeah, as he appears, uh, appears, Karen shoots him. And then Laurie appears in the shadows and attacks him, uh, stabbing him. Which, <sighs> they should know at this point, that all happens when you stab this Michael is it. he gets a free knife. That's all that ever yeah. happens when you stab Also, Michael. sometimes Laurie's able to just like... He's like super strong, constantly lifting people, but sometimes she's randomly able to just push him really far away. Yeah, yeah. Just at the perfect moments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe maybe Lori's doing significantly more lifting than they were uh, sh- than her character. And he's also getting like displaying. shot and stabbed, and then like Lori bites him, and he's like, "Oh, oh, really? <laughs> oh, that hurt way more than everything else." It's uh, <laughs> it's all. Oh, it's, it's, was that your mouth? Gross! Oh my god! What have you been eating? In these times? Yeah, I, I've heard the human mouth is way dirtier than like a dog, and you yeah. bit me. Look, you just bit me. Look, all what do this, I have we, now? Through all this, I think we can at least count on Michael Myers to be the one wearing a mask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about it. That's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, so then they basically attack him, sending him tumbling down the steps. Karen and Allison leave the safe room, and uh, he regains consciousness. Oh, surprise. Uh, grabs Karen's ankle. Allison stabs him with his own knife. How dare her? Uh, his own knife? Uh, and then the two yeah. escape the room. They flip a switch, and these metal bars. No, they're like metal blades. They're like swords come out, and they barricade the exit, trapping Michael in the safe room as he fills with, ga- it fills with gas. Lori lights the flare, tosses it, not worrying about... Listen... I really hope she has intentionally moved all of her important stuff, like her tax papers and everything, to a, a separate place. Uh, because if she was oh, planning to set her house on fire this whole time, certainly she's got to have like all of her other stuff, like in a like her important stuff somewhere else. Anyway, I also wanted to note she had a lot of mannequins in her house, and I know that they were used for target practice. But if her plan this whole time was to have Michael come into her house, she really didn't think that was going to backfire on her, or was it like, like? She just planned for every contingency, like, oh, he's gonna if he gets in. Also, all the mannequins, they all had penis. Did they? A- anatomically. Yeah, I swear. I go I, swear I go back and watch this movie. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, like you're circling <laughs> them, like that's a penis. That's a penis. Oh my god. In my uh in, in my breakdown video of all the Easter eggs, I have all the my <laughs> thumbnail is just a red circle around the mannequin penis. <laughs> just like the, <laughs> like any new you're rock stars like video. It's just like we you found know, this in Halloween. <laughs> you won't believe what we found 700 of in the Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then One they set them it on fire. Butter on it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's dead already. It wouldn't have mattered. Uh, setting the room in place with Michael in it. He just looks at him menacingly. Uh, and then in the next movie, you'll find that he menacingly, after staring, immediately sprinted to a fireproof room in the basement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like that part looks like it's not that'll work yeah uh and then they hitch a ride in the back of a pickup truck coming down the road the three moon embrace that they're taken as they're taken to safety but they don't because in because this is when we jump to halloween kills where they're immediately yelling don't put it out don't put it out let just it burn. let it burn despite the fact that they were on a truck being taken to safety so which one is it please um they intended this to start right from there, so I don't understand. Which is where we jump to the second movie. Uh, but before we do that, because uh, the second movie does leave right where we left off, I want to ask you guys quick thoughts. Ratings of the first Halloween movie. What do you give it? Six out of ten. I'm going to say uh, five out of ten. The only, like, maybe the music and some, you know, interesting characters, kind of. It's like the only redeeming thing, but most of all, it's like, not very good yeah i think if it was a i think treating it as a standalone you could choose to end here like you could choose to take this as like the final like just a duo like just the two movies you know 78 and then this is a finalized 2018 you could take that and seeing michael be killed there you could be like this is the end of the story and then i think if you do that i would say five out of ten it's decent enough five out of ten by the way for me is like I put it in the middle of average movies where I enjoyed it, but I'm that's as far as I go. Like tw- five out of ten is like average for me, so everything should fall kind of there. So I'd say five out of ten. Um, 
when we get to Halloween Kills, it will not get that such uh, such grace. Um, <laughs> I will start by saying that this is gonna be a Morbius discussion. Yeah, <laughs> I will say that uh, Brian loved this movie. Our friend that we watched it with loved like this so movie bad, for the, in the so bad it's good way. Uh, I did not share the same sentiment when I watched this movie. Watching it back, it is funnier this time, but it, it was definitely like. I had some laughable moments. I, I don't think there was a point in this movie where I thought it was good, though. There, there was not a single part where I was like, wow, they're doing something special here. <laughs> um, right. Halloween yeah. kills. Evil dies tonight. That was the motto. That's what that's what we're going with. Um, yeah. Guess what <laughs> didn't I, uh... die tonight. <laughs> Guess what didn't die tonight. <laughs> Morgan Freeman voice. It did not. <laughs> I guess everybody else in this movie was evil then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe that's what it was trying to say. I, uh, I... Oh, okay. The, the ten out of ten, the actually. Movie. Then <laughs> the Thinking Man's <laughs> horror movie. The Thinking Man. Uh, yeah, I, the only thing I knew about this movie before I watched it was people say "Evil dies tonight" a lot. So I made it a point when I was watching it to count every time someone said it, <laughs> and I got it. I counted up to twenty-two times. Uh, oh maybe a couple God. slips through. The way that they started that phrase too was like, what did they say? It was like. Good will, uh, love will prevail as he picks up a baseball bat. And then a girl in the bar is just like, evil dies tonight. <laughs> and you're like, that's yeah. what we're going with. <laughs> um, said immediately after the events of the previous film, Cameron Elam found, finds a wounded deputy, Frank Hawkins, while walking home from a Halloween party. Uh, that's the Cameron Elam is the guy that obviously um, the, yeah, is the, the boyfriend that, the yeah, that, yeah. The, and the uh, that we didn't see <laughs> the the boyfriend that was irrelevant in the last two acts of the last movie. Um, I guess he was just walking home the whole time. Yeah. Just took forever. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I was like, where am yeah. I? I've well, never the, walked home. That's what like, the first whole act of this movie is. What was everyone else in Haddonfield doing during the last movie? I guess it is kind of what's happening. Yeah. Which I'm going to, I'm not going to lie to you when the movie started right where it left off. I loved that. I, that, I will say, like, my initial, like, my first reaction to the very beginning of this movie was like, oh, I like that. Let's start exactly where we left off. Let's show how he gets out and stuff. I thought that was cool. Uh, that was immediately b abandoned, um, that thought. Uh, because, uh, yeah, Hawkins regrets withholding serial killer Michael Myers' execution uh, and resolves to kill him uh, himself that night. Newsflash, it does not happen. He does not. <laughs> Uh, in fact, so much so Quite that it's close. Yeah. Yeah. And that I will he also is, say he's in a hospital for the rest of this. Movie. Yeah. Not yeah. A, wait a minute. Yeah. Like he literally resolves to kill himself, uh, kill him himself and then doesn't even try. Like, yeah. he like, even like get he's, up. In, he's in a hospital for the rest of this movie. And, uh, uh, I don't. I don't want to go out talking about Halloween ends too much, but, uh, so, he's barely in it. So, well, so here's you know, what we're going to do. Jared. Starts, like, we're going to record a companion to this. So if you guys are listening to this and you want a spoiler version of Halloween ends, I'm going to release that middle of this week. Uh, so this should be releasing on Monday. I'll release that on like Wednesday or Thursday. Jared and I record a spoiler version of Halloween ends as a companion to this episode. So if you want to check wait. that out, uh, we'll do that. And Jared, uh, Tom, if you do want to watch Halloween ends before then, you can join us as well. We can record Maybe it. Maybe I might do that. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, you know what Hawkins did? You know, he started flirting with Laurie when he was in the hospital. He's like, maybe I don't have to kill him. Yeah. I, can kind of get I can still get my bag. Yeah. <laughs> Love can win instead Love of evil die. <laughs> Love will prevail tonight. That was what really happened there. Some, somewhere out there, Hawkins heard that person say that. And he's like, you know what? Yeah, and like it it totally at that point is like where we learn that like yeah like Lori also is kind of a like kind of abandons her plans i mean not intentionally but she really doesn't have a whole lot to say in this movie uh she kind of Lori takes a back seat which to me was like an indication that they're trying to pass the torch to the main new main characters uh which yeah. is something that i want to talk about in the companion for sure um this is so so i'll jump forward uh hawkins act uh this where we get a flashback to 1978 which is how we shoehorn hawkins into being as a part of the original movie uh because we show a scene that did not happen in an actual movie but it does have dr loomis in it uh yeah. saying has, he done it? has he done it again what happened here did michael kill did he michael kill again <laughs> again I would be surprised to be killed again. I think five, you know, it's going to be his. He didn't tell me, but it was implied that five was his max amount. And all of the rumors of the other movies didn't happen. Every time I say hi to him, he'd go, and I'm like, five killings? <laughs> More, well, actually, he killed his sister, so like six, I guess. 
Unless we don't count that. Count that. Five. We don't count that. Either. Five more, right? Five, five more. more. Michael's like, he's like a kid. <laughs> he's just waving to him like, oh, five. Um, that's the amount of kills. I see. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, do the rest of this as Dr. Lubis. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hawkins. Okay, so this is the this is the first thing I this is so we had a flashback and this didn't even say this yet. Um so yeah, it doesn't talk about this in the synopsis, but I would like to jump back to their uh before they enter the scene. They're they're driving around talking about how the boogeyman has killed five people, right? Or like this guy's coming around in a white mask killing people. They talk to these kids, right? <laughs> Kids, you better get out of here. There's a maniac on the loose right down the street. Bye. <laughs> LOL. Yeah, it just drives off like fast too. Um, like I'm not gonna be here when this guy shows up. And <laughs> but then the kid, the kid is like, this is this is this kid's this child actor's big break, right? And he literally fumbled so hard in his acting scenes. This kid was a terrible actor. That is like the kid of the girlfriend's dad, or whatever. That like. We, you know, we see the one that saw him that night, uh, that witnessed him. Oh, uh, yeah. The kid is, falls on the ground, trips on himself, hilarious, um, and then turns around, sees Michael Myers, and then you know he ban he fall like closes his eyes, and then the cops are there. Uh, but he says the funniest thing there. He's like, he's like, I just saw him. He was there. And then you're like, he's like, who was there? The boogeyman. And he says it like <laughs> so, like terribly dramatic. Like such an act, like this Boogie kid, man. this kid like knew it was his big break in acting and he failed. I'm sorry, but this kid is not getting hired. Uh, <laughs> maybe in like a Disney channel, like side character, like, I don't know. Uh, he didn't do great. Didn't do great. So then we pass the actors. They go in this, uh, into this room, uh, into the, into Michael Myers's house. Cause they know he's going to be there. And I love this. The first thing this one cop says, he's like, there's a dead dog in here. And then the guy's like, the other cop's like, what? And he's like, nothing. Yeah, why does he, like, he never says it again. He didn't he's like, I guess he... like, they shouldn't both go check this out and determine if this is something important to investigate. He's just like, thinking, he's like, I hate repeating myself. He knows I hate repeating myself. I can't believe he just said what. All right, nothing. He literally here, never right? hears anything I say. I'm not going to repeat myself. <laughs> And so yeah, and then and then he goes to the window and he's he goes to the windows. They're investigating, and the, his cop partner goes and checks out the window. He sees the footprints on the ground, stares at them for a long time, looks out the window and sighs and says, "Nothing exciting ever happens in." And then before he can finish his sentence, gets tackled by Michael Myers in <laughs> such a funny fashion, starts strangling him. And then we see, uh, we obviously see. Uh, Hawkins show up and he's trying to sh he's like holding a gun he's like should I shoot him and then whiffs shoots right into the neck of the of the yeah. of the cop <laughs> and then in a even funnier turn of events Michael just drops him because he's like oh he's dead now job done and just yeah. slowly walks out of the room stealer and literally slowly walks out of the room horizontally within the line of sight of this cop and Hawkins misses his shots there yeah. misses his shots while he's walking down a straight path down out the door and like totally fumbles every single shot and he apparently was stone cold accurate when it came to killing his cop friend but <laughs> but not not a, i don't know man hawkins hopefully if took this a lot goes of aim through training. his neck it'll kill michael <laughs> see too many action movies which honestly yeah i mean it probably should have went through right i don't know uh, and then, don't... and then, and then Loomis is like, he's like, did Mike, like, yeah, what we were talking about, did Michael kill? And he's like, like, we won't arrest yeah. him if he doesn't kill one more time. I think five is the actually legal Did Michael legal kill limit. again? Did Michael kill again? Looks at his dead and friendly shot. Yeah, he uses guns now. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> Which like, he's they... like, if he, if he killed again, we'll arrest him. But otherwise, no, no, otherwise, no, he's free time. to go. Um, he's, just, he's like, yeah, he shot him. He shot yes. that guy. Okay. Michael Michael killed him. Dude, crazily. You know, watch out. Michael's a trained marksman now. We're going to really watch out. Um, so, yeah, then we jumped. Uh, so then we're forward uh, after this flashback that establishes Hawkins as a, uh, as a uh, legacy character. And uh, in the present day, we're at the fire. And, uh, no, I think they actually go to the 40th anniversary of Mike is, Mike's imprisonment 
first, yes. right? So we have this. So Michael's imprisonment. They're celebrating the uh, 40th anniversary uh, with yep. Marion Chambers, longtime friends, Marion Chambers, Lindsay Wallace, and Cameron's dad. Normally they give me the actor and actress's names on here, but it's not giving them to you today. So I'm sorry. Uh, Lonnie Elam is the son of, of Cameron. Yep. Uh, meanwhile, after the confrontation the with Michael, Laurie Schroeder. Yeah. Uh, Cameron's the dad. Lonnie. Oh, no. Yeah. No, Cam Lonnie's Cameron's the dad. The Cameron's the son. Uh, meanwhile, after their confrontation with Michael, Laurie Strode, daughter Karen, and daughter Allison, granddaughter Allison, are horrified when a group of firefighters arrive at the burning Strode. Being there, despite being carried away with the truck in the previous movie, uh, ac they're accidentally freeing Michael from the basement using their tools. Um, not exactly. Uh, they're there. This is a little bit of an incorrect synopsis. He's walking in there in the house. Uh, this trained firefighter is not testing his footing and falls uh, into the basement and then is uh, the door opens, the like metal, like fireproof door opens. And he's like, surprise, I'm here. Uh, kills this firefighter. <laughs> and then the other one's like, grab my hand. And, and Michael's like, I'll grab your hand. Another free kill. Um, and then proceeds to show what this movie's going to be, which is uh, Michael Myers, the martial arts movie. Um, I know it's like it's like an action movie. That it's that an plays. action movie. He, he looks around. He's like, I can take him. Yeah, it's <laughs> come at me. They all yeah, grab their like their tools and they like. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Because, <laughs> and I'm gonna reference my two favorite letterbox reviews for this movie at, at, at <laughs> certain points, and this is one of them where the cops see Michael Myers walking out of a burning building. And they start getting their axes and their hammers ready. And then the guy with those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, this guy's not leaving here alive. I hope he likes getting wet. <laughs> okay. But here's the funny thing about that. Fire hoses are actually ri have ridiculous stopping power. Like the force that comes out of fire hoses is like could kill somebody. So what's hilarious to me is that this particular fire hose <laughs> was not being used at full power. Like he used it. And then it shows the water very lightly splashing like it was a hose from your backyard. And so it's like, it's funny to me because had they used it intentfully and like correctly, it could have easily launched him back into that house and given them plenty of time to call the cops. Like they easily or, could yeah. have used this fire hose to keep him down or had a scene or they could have just had or a scene is that strong. So right. just, it doesn't matter. But they didn't just, like the they could have also showed it like knock him down and then him getting up and like pushing through it would have been kind of epic. Like push through the water and then grab him and snap his neck or something. Like that could have been a cool way to do it. But Here's they what they chose to make it look like he's using a garden hose on him, which is the funniest <laughs> imagery ever. Here's what they should have done. They should have Michael pull up his mask, open his mouth, catch all the water, and become a giant ball, and then just roll over everybody. That would have. It's, this is why Tom needs to be hired. Uh, right. It's, 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 it's that cartoony anyway, because then they all just start going at him like old boy. It's just that. Im That's imagery, literally like, what I was the, thinking. All the other firefighters, like with axes, getting ready. He's like, he's not leaving here alive. Yeah, he's leaving here wet. <laughs> it's, it's literally so. It's like so cartoonish, and I guess the firefighters also don't know that he killed those people. They're just assuming they're like, "Oh, it's a weird guy. Let's kill him." I mean, with he's the axes. holding an axe, like very violent intent. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I guess you're kind they're of not, right. Like, they, no didn't, they didn't give him like an ultimatum to like, "Hey, don't play with <laughs> us." Like, I wouldn't have wanted to immediately <laughs> fight. I'd be like, "Listen, man, we don't want to do this. Please drop okay, yeah, the back, axe, back off, or I'm gonna fire hose you." I'm gonna fire uh, Rosie. Also, I feel like they should know who he is. Like, yeah, know, that might be like, what it is. I, I, like, I know, I know. Like, they didn't want to like cause too much of a panic in the last movie because it's you know it's uh, the cliche holiday. We can't we can't close everything down. <laughs> it would cause a panic. Um, so, but like, I feel like the firefighters and other like emergency services would like be in the know of what's going on. Yeah, I think I think you're right there. I I think that. I don't know. By the way, I, I closed a little thing and it messed up my messed up my proportions here on the on, I hate when I on do the that. screen. I, I closed so many little things on accident. Tiny box. <laughs> so anyway, but sorry. I, if you're wondering why. I'm oh my god, no! The video is suddenly changing slight format. There we go. Um, yeah, I think that like it. It's just such a weird scene, and it just sets the pace for this movie. You're like, oh, this is an action movie now. 
Like this is we're I watching know. an action he, movie with like he our main character. Around. He looks like a trained like martial Bill. artist. Like because <laughs> it's so funny because in the beginning of this movie he sees cops and he's like, I'm gonna r- turn myself in. I'm outnumbered. Granted, they had guns, but like he clearly isn't that faced by bullets either. So like, but he sees these firefighters. He's like, Nah, I could take these. Yeah, they do the same thing. They just beat him with like bats. In that part too. Yeah, and so it's it's really funny. Uh, so so basically that's so uh he just totally fights all of these firefighters <laughs> in this like crazy action scene. Which I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be want to say this. I think for slasher films. Uh, you really undermine the horror elements when you show too much, and I think this movie is the prime example of how you can show too much in a, in in these movies. Granted, it's a slasher, not really a horror, as, or like, I guess slasher is like a subgenre of horror. Um, so it does like the slasher genre is more categorized by kills, <laughs> by like the quality of kills, right? Like uh, uh, like I, I see a lot of like horror TikTokers and stuff, and they'll be like, "This they actually really like Halloween Kills because it has some of the most unique kills in 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 horror movies." And so like, or so people do like in the slasher genre that are like big slasher fans do like unique kills, and I guess this movie does lean into that uh, and gives people a little bit more of what they want out of the slasher genre in that way. But it sacrifices a lot of the writing to do that, uh, which is you know really what it funny. does a lot of it does a lot of kills off camera that are also completely silent like they do the movie like the dad with the the hunter dad and like even right other they'll they'll do it off camera and then all completely silent Like you hear nothing because the character's like what happened to him which by the way is the only bent into a box or something yeah which by the way is the only times that we ever see him like move bodies like you know like he'll like move and hide bodies or like do something with bodies and that only happens if we don't see them get killed. Like we only get that as like a discovery of murders, yeah. you know, like it's always interesting. Like, cause it's like when he kills them on screen, he just kind of slashes them and leaves. Like, uh, I don't know. It was, that's always very weird to me. Uh, anyway, uh, they, he, you know, murders all of the firefighters before driving back to Haddonfield, which I've heard a lot of people mention. When did Michael Myers learn how to drive? That was a plot hole of like the first movie people bring up like he was taken in as a child to, like some like kind of, I guess it'd be really asylum, funny but... if they had like uh little like news things that were sent into the news of like this car swerving like <laughs> it's like like i have michael myers is on the road in front of me and it just shows that this dude in the mask just swerving all over the road <laughs> <laughs> like hitting stop signs like going over curbs <laughs> Well, in the other movies, in the other continuities, they do have reasons. Like, they'll say, like, this person taught him. He went to driving school when he got out. (laughs) Or Loomis taught him because he didn't think it would come up for some reason. (laughs) He's like, while I'm giving you, while I'm talking to you, maybe just I'll teach you some Which could have been a really good reveal if they saved the Doctor for all three movies and had been, like, secretly he's been helping him this whole time. Like, that would have been kind of a cool reveal if they'd saved that. I think that was the twist in one of the continuities is one of the Doctor people was helping you yeah which i don't know that could have been a cool little reveal if they saved that it, it would be hilarious if if dr loomis was like teaching michael to drive on the side <laughs> and and like like, and, like, like use your signals <laughs> use your signals <laughs> but like i'm just imagining like dr loomis getting a call and learning that that michael has been uh pulled over running red light. has he done it has he run a red light again has he done like, it uh, did he run another red light oh, it's like Michael doesn't use the turn yeah. signal when, like, but there's no cars around. He doesn't use a turn signal, and that's when Loomis thinks, "You are evil." <laughs> you are evil. Like, I want, like, I want them to go back to the old movies and just retroactively make all Loomis's dialogue just like that. It's super exaggerated. Has he done it again? Like, <laughs> Has he done it? Has he got another parking ticket? That's how you know. Later in the movie, there's a guy they think is Michael and drives away, and that's how you know it's not Michael because that guy crashes. <laughs> car and michael's a perfect driver (laughs) (laughs) these easter eggs we found these easter eggs in the in the (laughs) halloween movie (laughs) driving (laughs) um so then karen allison uh submit laurie to emergency surgery while michael kills an elderly couple in their home another really really funny one uh that happened and i i wrote some notes on this one too uh, cause that old couple was great. I strive to be that old couple flying drones and drinking at that age. Uh, great way to use their, uh, use your time. And then she, he walks into the bathroom and he sees him and he's like, 
<laughs> he's like, there's a big fell in a monster mask. And he locks the doors. <laughs> and then she's like, Will, what's he doing here? And he's like, who cares what he's doing? Call the cops. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds kind of a good reaction. No, I know. Me. Like they were the most real characters in this entire movie, in the entire trilogy, maybe. Like these characters are so <laughs> relatable. I was like, yeah, Whoa. I respect these characters so much. He's like, who cares? Call the cops. There's a big fill in a monster mask. Is that why they describe Michael as being so strong? He's a big guy. That's it. I mean, he's huge, right? He's supposed to be like six four or something like that. Really? I mean, look at him. He's tall. He's big. He's tall. In the Rob Zombie one, he was like actually like a re- played by like some wrestler. I think that would be like really big imagine guy. the Big Show playing him, <laughs> <laughs> just fucking like seven foot three and just like <laughs> suplexes someone to death. That's what should have happened. Oh, please hire me to write the next trilogy. You clearly don't care about your writers, so I could do this. He RKO's like a cop and kills him. Wait. Wait, what do you mean that writers don't care? You t- tell me that Danny McBride didn't pour his heart and soul into this trilogy. <laughs> How did you know the writer offhand? Because I, I watch these movies and the credits are the first thing that happens. You look, you look at the credits? I'm clearly not a kinophile. Danny McBride? <laughs> yeah. Like yes, the that, guy from East? Yes, not Danny McBride. <laughs> Wait, from what? Wait, for, for this movie? Yeah. Wait, what else does oh, he are write? You, are you sure? Is that you serious? Yeah. I have not Danny heard. McBride from Eastbound Down and Out wrote for <laughs> Halloween and Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. Is this true? <laughs> this can't be true. <laughs> I don't know I'm what here. that is. So. No, I'm here on a computer. You can Google it. Bro, you're making this. Making this up. What else is here? Danny McBride, American film producer. Wait, that Danny McBride? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, uh, the dude from freaking... Um, uh, <laughs> Pineapple Express. Yeah, and what the heck? This is the end, and <laughs> yeah. bro, bro. Okay, Burke, you you actually kind of look like Danny McBride. <laughs> well, that's because I I wrote I wrote these movies. I actually am. Danny oh, McBride. that's it. You, you wrote your, your ideal me. couple. You wrote <laughs> your ideal couple into that elderly couple. I did. Michael I did. Kills. It's like when you wow, say I gross. found you. When you say I wrote my <laughs> ideal couple, and it just really doesn't. That doesn't sound <laughs> like that. Sounds weird. <laughs> You anyway, see, honey, <laughs> this is what I love. <laughs> um, Why so, can't we be dude, like that? This Bruce? plot summary is so short. It's hilariously short because there's literally no plot to this movie. Um, yeah, uh, Michael escapes. Evil dies tonight. Michael <laughs> kills again. Evil does not die tonight. The ends. Yeah. So here's where, so here's where we go. So he kills the elderly couple. An emergency alert uh, informs Tommy, Marion, Lindsay, and Lonnie of the Michael's escape. Before Bar Preacher and Vanessa supposedly encounters Michael in the backseat of her car. It is not. It is the other poor soul. Uh, which this comes to their treatment of like the mentally ill as like so bad yeah. in these movies. Like they just don't have I feel like he just Danny McBride just which if now that I know it's Danny McBride puts like so much <laughs> into perspective in these movies. Maybe he did the humor because he's like a comedian, right? Or right. Like he probably is like, now I'm thinking this is all intentional. Like this is all just yeah. him being like, ah, who gives it? Did gives Danny McBride write for every single one in the trilogy? In this trilogy, Halloween. yes. That is so funny. I'm so confused. That is so out of pocket too. Like, why, is, why are you just bringing this up now also? <laughs> he just because, had this information. Because Burke, Burke was talking about the writers and I'm like, hey, is he... Is Burke saying that Danny McBride just didn't pour his heart and soul into these three movies? Now I'm thinking he did. <laughs> <laughs> so they, the bad uh, side for Danny. Yeah, Karen and Alice are afforded to Michael's escape, informing. Oh uh, wait, oh I'm, I'm a little bit ahead. Um, sorry. Uh, bar patron Vanessa thinks it's in Michael's backseat of the car. I love that she's she tells her like husband she's like he's in the backseat. You should go check him. it. I'm like. No, I'm like yeah, this he, is a smart character yeah. until yeah. later. What? Until he's yeah, not. That's, yeah. that's his car now. That's his car. I'd be like, we don't own a what car, honey? Which car? We didn't bring our car here. <laughs> uh, we're walking. We home. walked. <laughs> uh, Tommy and the others confront Michael as the car drives away and crashes. The driver leaves unnoticed by the crowd, which is funny. Um, which is even more. Egregious. And it is revealed to be because... that guy. Yeah, but it's and even he's more. The so they, driver, so, not so, Michael. So they don't notice the driver get away. The driver who's not Michael. But also, in, uh, in The Evil Dies Tonight of It All, when uh, they're chanting a million times while they're chasing this individual through the, the hospital, everyone in this universe knows what Michael Myers looks like. Like, I know. This like, is so as, funny to me. You're right. Like, they should like, know. They should, like, not only that, they showed 
both of these prisoners, because they're both prisoners from the the bus crash. They showed both that this guy and Michael Myers on the TV screen in the bar. Which is, so, like, they had the foresight to be like, this is how he is, we're going to have one of the escapees be the other person in the scene. And they chose the one that looks so much like he could not be Michael Myers. <laughs> like, like way to be the second one. They could have picked not anybody in build. this crew. And they literally chose the most not Michael Myers person to be this one. And this, it's so guy, funny to guy, me that that was their yeah, choice. Yeah, like, Michael Myers is, like, an a fit like six five man this guy looks like danny devito playing the penguin in batman Returns. <laughs> it does he does and so you're like literally like a how is anyone inaccurately discerning this and you're right yeah. like they have they're like we don't really know what he looks like how do you know what he looks like i'm like well for one he was arrested in 1978 so his photos should be like somewhere to see yeah like, his photos were literally on the news yeah in this like movie like i know like as an audience member we're not supposed to know what he looks which like, i think is like, like a cool stylistic choice to not have us see his face i thought that was cool but when you're like the characters do not know like that is just a little far-fetched we saw on the news like yeah it's like, like his mug shot he's like <laughs> looking away slightly and there's like a little shadow for some reason no one knows what he looks like <laughs> like oh no <laughs> yeah and then so like yeah the, i i think we got a little ahead of ourselves but i just found that to be so egregious yeah like, like this this poor this poor soul and uh, just imagine like you're well i guess he was a criminal so he wasn't completely innocent but but imagine you're being targeted for something that you didn't do and you're being like cornered by a bunch of angry people yelling evil dies tonight <laughs> and like they're just chasing you up the stairs. Like, there's a whole gap. Poor guy was going to, like, to the hospital to get help. You yeah, know, like, poor know. guy was like. <laughs> like oh, it's there's crazy. There's also a bit where someone, like, during the, when they're all yelling evil dies tonight and running up the stairs, where someone gets, like, pushed down the stairs in this little sequence. There's all, all of them fall. falling. It was so funny. Uh, and then this is where we get. <laughs> she was evil. And this is where we get the best character in the entire show, Yeehaw Sheriff, uh, shows up. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and that's always funny. I am the law. And uh, that, that was great. And uh, and then Tommy obviously forms a uh, a, a angry mob. Um, Essentially. To, uh, well, I guess that was already there. but it, it, So en route to collect Cameron, Tommy forms a mob of vengeful Haddonfield citizens to hunt down Michael before he can hurt anyone else. Evil Karen, dies tonight. Evil dies tonight. Karen and Allison are informed of Michael's escape. Information that Karen decides to withhold from Lori, understandably, so she can recover. Um, after reconciling, Karen invites Allison uh, in joining him and his father to hunt down Michael, which is so freaking funny to me because they already know how dangerous this guy is, that he killed a bunch of, like, I don't know that he, they know he killed a bunch of firefighters or whatever, but they're literally like, they think that these three, these three think collectively that they can kill Michael Myers. They think collectively. Not only they, one of them had experience with Michael. Too. And also, yeah. like, they keep it. Like, there's a t scene where, like, Tommy's like, remember, strength in numbers as they continue to split into smaller and smaller <laughs> groups. Right. Like, it's so funny because, like, and then even at the end, we're, like, kind of proved that it didn't really matter anyway. But it's just, it's so funny to me. Um, so... Cam uh, yeah, so they, they all join to hunt down Michael, uh, to which Allison agrees to avenge her father. Lori Evil Hawk dies tonight. Evil dies tonight. Lori and Hawkins awake and reminisce about their former relationship. Hawkins is implied to be Karen's <laughs> biological father. I didn't catch that. It's, they didn't really imply that. They just kind of talked about being together. It's not really implied, right? Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. They don't, he doesn't even say they had like had sex. He just says that they kissed oh, they, and that was I all that you happened. And you were sweet on that other guy. And that actually seems like it's implying that the other guy was right. actually father. So, weird, right? <laughs> didn't In the end, it didn't matter. Uh, elsewhere, Mary and Lindsay, Vanessa, and her husband, Marcus, are attacked by Michael uh, <laughs> while warning Adamfield sisters to stay inside. Um, and it's so funny to me. This is the this is the Escalade scene, right? Uh, yeah, where they all the prove, scene, right? yeah, where they all independently prove that they were not qualified to be doing this, <laughs> um, and that they were more danger to themselves than each other. Like, because the, literally the old lady is like got a gun and she's like, well, look out, and she's just shooting yeah. in every direction. And he's on the roof, which is funny to me that like Michael Myers is straddling the roof, like he turned into the alien. Yeah, and then. And then, like, so they all get, like, subsequently murdered in this car, uh, and then the funniest, one of the funniest scenes in this movie, which is what reminds me of uh, the scene that I was referencing in, uh, I'm already forgetting the name of that movie that's out, um, 
whatever. The horror movie I reckon, uh, rec- uh, talked about earlier where he pulled the gun out and shot him. <laughs> oh, yeah, Terrifier. Um, terrifier. Uh, this, scene, this scene was equally <laughs> funny because the lady's pulling up to shoot Michael. She starts shooting into the car, by the way, which she thinks her, peop- her husband and these other guys are in. She's just shooting into the car. Uh, so she's shooting up this car with her friends in it. And then she walks up to Michael Myers and Michael kicks the door, which flips the gun around and shoots herself in the face. Yeah. yeah. And it was just yeah. the, the funniest. Well, also, like <laughs> She left the car and like walked, ran really far away before deciding to come back and shoot him. Which like she was like, the only was... smart one in that. And then she somehow like was yeah. dumb again. Why'd she, yeah. why'd she go so far away if she was going to shoot him? No clue, right? Maybe she thought everyone else was running and they were all dumb and didn't get out of the car. <laughs> like, why did they all stay in the car? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, while Tommy takes, so they're all dead. They're all dead. Yeah. Um, while Tommy make, takes, uh, except for Lindsay, which we never see her again, do we? I don't think we ever see her again. Isn't she, she just in the, the hospital for the rest of the movie? I, yeah, I think she gets, yeah, I think she's just in the hospital. Yeah, and she's not in the third one. I will tell you that. <laughs> so no, she's just <laughs> never seen again. Uh, she's supposed to be like a survivor, right? But she's like, Whatever. So th- that was just a weird scene. Why kill? Her? Why not kill her? Like, they, like it's like they kept her alive to say that Michael was coming, but that was implied. <laughs> that, like that was yeah. implied that my, no one's gonna be like, maybe someone else did this. Like they know. So I don't know. While Tommy takes Lindsay to the hospital, <laughs> Lonnie, Car- uh, Cameron, and Allison map out Michael's victims, deduce that he's heading to his childhood home, which is so funny because everyone else is like, she's like, like. Uh, Lori's uh daughter right uh Karen is like she's coming to the ho- he's gonna come to the hospital he's gonna like they're so like egocentric they have they have this so wrong right <laughs> yeah and that's another thing that just adds like to the like she keeps telling her like he's gonna come for her and so when uh the not obviously not Michael Myers shows up everyone's like well they said Saul was coming. This guy, this guy doesn't match the picture, yeah. but I, I guess I guess it's him. Oh yeah, and, and I guess I jumped ahead of that, ahead of that, right? Because uh, no, no, that's that's still happening. Um, no, it skips this on the synopsis of the fact that they made this dude kill himself. <laughs> yeah, it like say that. No, it doesn't even say it was on these IMDb plot synopsis are not great. Who writes these? Um, <laughs> and they're not always in. They're not always like in the right order either. Sometimes I have to discern that, but. Uh, anyway, uh, we jump ahead. They've all been killed. And uh, Tommy reunites with former Haddonfield Sheriff Lee Brackett, uh, which is I, also Hulk, supposed to be Hulk a Hulk legacy. Hulk, right? Yeah, that's supposed to be the legacy character as well, uh, whose daughter yeah, Annie was killed in 1978 attack. I don't know whether that happened. If you are watching this and you know, let me know in the comments or in, uh, I don't know. Yeah, just let me know there. Uh, Tommy organizes a mob of hundreds of Wait, Haddonfield. No, no, I got it wrong. It's not you, Hall Sheriff. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Let me I, I, I let me check really something is. real quick. Um, oh yeah, if you ever have a question, I forgot I created this, so I'm gonna let you know now. If you ever have a question that you either want to ask us for the podcast, maybe we'll read it on there, or if you want to send a comment like a response to if this if I got that correct and they are actually in the movie previous movie or not. Uh, I made an email for us, Burke and the Betas at gmail.com, so you can email that. It's B U R K E and the Betas at gmail.com. Uh, anyway, I'll continue. Uh, I just totally forgot I made that, and I just checked, and I do have one, so I didn't make that up in my head. Um, let's see. So, <laughs> side note. Dreamed right? it. I dreamed it. You can also send your recommendations for future movies on there um, or in the comments if, on YouTube. You can also ask us in your dream. You might hear that. Yeah, we might hear that. Cam- uh, Tommy can read dreams sometimes. Um, yeah, I, and Jared, I, he, like, guessed my card a couple times. Yeah. Wildly. It was wild. So, I think he's got some, like, exactly um yeah so tommy organizes his mob of hundreds of hadfield citizens obviously not this time a different tom uh yeah yeah not um, me even though there. even though tom does it also been different agree if with i was evil. there <laughs> evil would I actually have died that night yeah um, informing La- Lori of michael's survival she just breaks the hospital she's like Lori, he's he's here like okay <laughs> tommy's got not the best instincts meanwhile michael <laughs> murders the current homeowners of his childhood home which not again john's he yeah, killed the- big john and little john <laughs> listen no big- it wasn't little john it was little john big little john, john and little john got the broad deal like i'm just saying their Ooh. murders were a little bit more they were a little <laughs> bit more gruesome is all i'm saying <laughs> <Look>. <laughs> oh yeah i guess they- who also who gives him why 
who wrote that they had to be Big John and Little John? Like, why? <laughs> That's just a random detail. That's what I'm saying. Danny McBride might need to be uh, in, uh, uh, investigated I, here. I, 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 I also like how every time that they, they refer to Big John or Little John, never just John, never, yeah. never, not, never even other any other like type Johnny. of couple pet name. It's, it's not Honey. Not anything. They do say baby and honey a couple times, but mostly say Big John. Yeah, but it's mostly (laughs) Big John and Little John. (laughs) Which are not the ones you think. (laughs) They're like cartoon characters. I it's just like, listen, did Michael really need to gouge his eyes out like that? Like like he didn't do that to other people. Yeah. (laughs) We need to we need to check Michael Miles Myers' biases here. You know, (laughs) It's, you know, it's a common thing across many horror movies. Where, he walks uh, in, he's like, you're gay? Eyes. <laughs> like, look, look, Michael, Michael's been away for a long time. I was just going to stab. <laughs> he was in, a, you got to understand, he was killing people in the 70s. He's, he's, he's from a different time. <laughs> but uh, it, it, this is an interesting thing across several horror movies where, like, the house where terrible things happen and, like, and someone moves would you guys buy a house where you knew like several gruesome murders no <laughs> no they like, have like, like white, um white people do they, they have like, like where they like this is this is michael myers house and he's gonna get you if you mess with little john and big john <laughs> no so okay so i saw a video not too long it was probably like a year ago or like maybe maybe it was a little bit shorter than that but it was uh there was a listing of it was it was somebody doing like as like a uh, I think it was like one of those like it was like a housing TikToker like it was she just talked about like weird finds on like Zillow and she was like this house like I found this house that's listed and she was going through like the house and she's like do you want to know why it's so cheap and she was like yeah because this is the first victims of Jeffrey Dahmer and I was like oh okay that makes a lot of sense now actually shouldn't it be more expensive I feel like people would be like interested in having disagree. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe for some people, but then they're getting a steal, so it works right, out for them. All right, these serial killers aren't Michael Myers. Jeffrey Dahmer's not going to come yeah. back. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it's also like that in other like horror movies. Like, like I'm pretty sure like every Conjuring movie is like, well, yeah, we bought this house. We didn't. They, we just bought it for you know a sight unseen. That they, they told it to us real cheap if we didn't do any inspection. Oh, and it's haunted. But who would have guessed it with this? 50 murders that happened here yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> so i don't know i don't know really weird uh anyway so, R.I.P. R- R- to John. legally we don't have to report things moving on their own <laughs> that's just not the laws don't say we have to do that so we don't do it yeah, yeah. i think I, I think the johns were the best characters <laughs> they were they were great uh which by the way um the the mob is just like uh, it, this this also glanced over those kills in this uh too weird actually um, they were they were they were the ideal couple they're like yeah you want to get high and dance or what? yeah i mean yeah they 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 had a, they had good vibes i like their vibes um yeah so basically uh they <laughs> um they the mob is redirected they're like oh he's going to be at the house uh but not before t- uh before Cameron, Allison, and Lonnie are, show up first, and they. Uh, oh, it does talk about Lance jumping out the window. Okay, it did. It, it just was again out of out of uh, out of order. I think. Um, yeah, Lori suffers an injury. Uh, L- Lori suffers an injury to her wound. What? <laughs> oh yeah, you know, you know how you know in every movie where the gravely uh, wounded person you get after they get bandaged up is like, no, the fight must go on, and just. Yeah, I like that they actually. I do like that they actually made her like fine. But that was another line that was really funny because once she figures out that he's still alive, she says she grabs a syringe of unknown inf- of unknown origin and says, <laughs> and, and the, the mom's like, away. the mom is like, you don't know what that does. And she says, she says it makes it get pain go away. Stabs it and immediately shouts in pain. Yeah, <laughs> which is so <laughs> funny. It makes the pain go away. Ah! Like, After this pain, like you don't know where it is, and she just like jabs it into her, like her. Th- she doesn't check for her vein or anything. She just goes right for it. It's all in her stomach. I mean, she, I guess she knew it knew it was painkillers, but I, I think it usually yeah it goes in like the IV, right? So yeah. Does by the way, her. any any medical betas? Can you let me know uh, in email or in the comments uh, whether or not uh, you can just stab syringes like that into your stump, like butt and then it's just gonna make like pain medicine like is that, is that maybe it way? didn't actually work she doesn't do anything right she still doesn't that, that do anything true. yes uh yes very very interesting anyway uh we're back to the house uh the, the the couple has been the johns have been killed 
Um, R.I.P. to Johns. And now the R.I.P. John and John. <laughs> exactly. R.I.P. Big John, Little John. <laughs> uh, if only they could have joined the Evil Dies Tonight mob. Exactly. They should have. They should have been like like polyamorous. Had a third guy, Mid John. <laughs> <laughs> he had a different option. He's like, maybe we just play play video games for Halloween. <laughs> I thought we were doing that, guys. John, come on, John. You always do this to me. All my fun. You don't. You don't stick with my plans. <laughs> yeah. Michael does something heinous to yeah. him. So they they talk about strength in numbers. So that's why they all three together go to hunt down uh, hunt down. Yeah. The killer, but then Lonnie then, immediately <laughs> decides to go in by himself. By himself. Um, and yeah, he for, he has for found the, for when the, the, yeah for the dumb reason of like because like at the, and I guess in like that first scene in the bar they're like teasing him like yo you were never brave enough to go into the Myers house and so like now is the time he has to oh. get for like not going in right the, the murder house when he was a kid yeah like, dude like you're four you're like, you're in your 40s and you're you're still worried about being taunted by <laughs> yeah like it's not even like the same type of survivor's deal i don't know it's just weird uh but allison and cameron follow in after apparently long enough for him to be murdered and stuffed into the attic uh not well into the attic either i might add uh as michael subsequently murders cameron upstairs uh and it's kind of like a you seeing this you seeing this see what i'm doing <laughs> um and then <laughs> allison doesn't run during that time uh, instead, she uh, is thrown down the stairs by Michael and breaks her leg before arriving. Oh, that's why she didn't run. Uh, arriving, Karen stabs Michael with a pitchfork where she got it. <clears throat> Great question. Uh, it was outside. It was part of their. It's part of the John's decoration. Oh, was this Chekhov's pitchfork? <laughs> yeah, they yes, yeah, actually, because they had it on some scarecrow. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So they they had a reason. Uh, she removes Dude, she, his mask she, she, she and then also, taunts she's him. There, she, she does that thing where, like, everyone does. We're like, oh, I see something. And she, they put down everything they have. She's yeah. like, I'm going to put down my gun. I'm going to put down this. Also, what I might add is they do the, the classic thing they do in these Halloween movies where they stab them once. <laughs> That's it. That, that's all. Yeah. Uh, she removes her mask, taunts him, to allowing fair, Allison to that escape. Should be good enough. To be fair, yes. Uh, Karen leads Michael to Tommy's mob in a nearby alley. It's a trap. Michael subsequently tonight. swarmed uh, by the mob, seemingly killed when Karen stabs him in the back again, only once. As the mob disperses, Michael slits. This is this is big fight scene. The yeah. final fight scene. Um, and this one is literally. I'm like, Michael. When did he train in martial arts? Yeah, like, yeah, it's, it, like, it turns what? into a John Wick movie. It does. He does a windmill and, kick. And, and, and this is the point where uh, we get to my other favorite letterbox review of this movie is, guys, watch out! He's got a 25 kill streak. He's gonna call it a tactical nuke. <laughs> 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 he's he's sworn by the mob, seemingly killed, and then the mob disperses. Michael slits Brackett's throat, kills the mob one by one, ending with Tommy killing him with his own baseball bat. Returning to Michael's childhood home, Karen stares in the upstairs window, yet again affirming that it is the house and not her because she just happens to be there. Um, yeah, visualizing a story she heard earlier about Michael endlessly staring out the same window. Michael appears behind her, uh, and she sees steamingly stabbed to death. Uh, and a little bit more of a horror stylistic, the hands getting, the defensive wounds on the hands getting slashed and stuff. Uh, Michael stares out his window with the cops right outside, not hearing the screams, apparently. Uh, and then I guess just escapes uh, while Lori stares out her hospital window. Uh, that is the end of the second movie. Uh, evil did not die tonight. Evil did not indeed die tonight. Uh, evil you, lived lived that night. Yeah, Evil actually lived. Uh, if you want to hear our spoiler review on the third one and kind of finalize this, we're going to do that. I do have a question. Release that later this week. Does the third one just start right from... No, it does not. It no. is There is a time jump. I will tell oh. you that much. But uh, yeah, we're not done yet, though. We're going to jump into another segment. But before we do that, I did want to just say, uh, what was your final thoughts on this movie? And uh, what would you give it out of 10? This movie was really bad. I'll give it a one out of ten. For, I'll give it a, the one out of ten, at least. You know, because there's some cool Michael Myers kills, I guess. But uh, yeah, whole lot of stupid in this movie. Dumb characters doing dumb things. Uh, as the movie attempts to, to talk about, I guess be talking about a mob justice or whatever. <laughs> it's just, it's being a really stupid movie where everyone yells "Evil dies tonight" thirty times and they all die. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Tom, what you got? Yeah, uh, I think it's really bad. <laughs> People just do stupid things in this movie for no reason. I'll, um, they should have doubled down on making it a horror comedy because it could have just been really funny. They should have yeah. just had a hallway. They should have just had the 
old boy Steve with Michael Myers <laughs> killing people. Like and from old, old boy, yeah, yeah. Right? like that same view and just have him doing that instead. They should have just done that. doubled down on horror comedy because they didn't do that. Decided to have weird morals, like just weird lessons that just came out of nowhere. A shoe whore did. It's getting to three out of ten. Look, look these movies are getting so stupid at this point that they should start, you know, if they're looking for ideas for a Halloween form, because even though the third one's called Halloween Ends, you know, money and IP, uh, they, they will make another Halloween movie in the future. <laughs> Halloween uh, starts again. Halloween starts again. I think they should cross over with another uh, beloved Universal franchise, Fast and the Furious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> the, Michael Myers in space. Michael Myers. <laughs> Michael Myers, the space murders. Um, that's when sci-fi uh, picks it up. And uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a one out of 10. I think it's slightly better than Morbius. Uh, that's my end of my thoughts. Um, now we'll jump into, we'll we'll head this by, uh, head on to the next segment. Again, we're going to drop a bonus episode that's going to talk about uh, Halloween ends. If you want to check that out, that'll be dropping later this week. Also, uh, the following week, we're going to be doing the emoji movie. Uh, moving away from oh. Halloween theme into some other themes. So uh, into, into just bad into themes. just other bad themes. Emoji movie is next. Uh, yeah. So that's going to be very interesting. And then uh, we did get our first recommendation. It is. I, I want to say preface this. I have to figure out when we can get to it. Uh, but it is a random out of pocket Disney movie that I don't know if we're gonna find. It was like a 2001 Disney movie that I've never heard of. I don't know. Oh. I don't know if that what is. is channel, I don't know if that is original? meant to be. I don't know if that's like a one that's sacred to you. Uh, let us know because if it's one that you don't want us to rip apart, you may want to retract your offer. Because if it's a 2001 Disney movie, I have a feeling it's not gonna go over too well. It's a Disney Channel movie. Uh, I'm pretty sure. It's called The Hound, I believe. Or Hound. Oh, Hounded. Yeah, it is. Okay, so the only one that comes up is 2001 Family Comedy. It is on Disney+. Plus. It has a 5 out of 10 on IMDb. And it has Shia That's LaBeouf. So Shia LaBeouf is the leading actor of it. So, um, it's live action? Is it it is live action. Uh, it is a Disney Channel original movie uh, with Shia LaBeouf and Jay Martin. So we'll have to check it out. Uh, that could, that could be maybe, uh, when we can fit that in, I'll let you know, but, uh, we'll, we'll check that out and see if that's something we can do. And I think that, uh, if we can, we'll definitely do that one. Uh, but emoji movie is next week. I'll keep you posted. Let's jump into the next segment though, uh, which is another draft corner. Uh, it's not always going to be drafts, but I thought because it's Halloween, this is going to be our only Halloween episode, or at least our last Halloween episode was last week, a Halloween one. Well, what did we do last week? Oh, Midsommar. We Midsommar. Yeah, I guess it was kind of in the, it, it's kind of in the horror genre, which we'll move away from horror for a little while. Take a little break after this one. Yeah. Uh, we will come back to horror eventually, but I think um, yeah. this was a good way to like round out Halloween with an actual movie called Halloween. Uh, and also to round it out is we're going to be draft picking our five uh, best horror movie villains. Um, so, I will, uh, we're going to go normal uh, way we typically go. Uh, give me a number one out of ten. Seven. Jared, you... I'm going to go with the tried and true seven. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Sam, okay, I'll, I'll go I'll six. Six? All right, I'm going to go with uh, eight, just so Jared has less luck of being close to one. <laughs> it's five, so Tom goes first, and then we'll go Jared and then me, and then uh, we'll back. Go back the same horror way. movie villain. Horror movie villains. Um, top All five, right, and five. then you guys let us know in the comments who you does, think. Has does it have to be like straight like horror, or can it no, be like there's, horror adjacent? And it villains? doesn't have to be like a a named villain either. If there's like <laughs> it, it's just like go for like most iconic or, or best in your eyes. So I'm um, going for like it could be a group thing. too if it makes sense too. I'm doing the thing from thing. Okay, John Carpenter's the thing. Write it down so I don't uh, forget. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Here, do you want to write down our things. list as we go? Like write our our, our our three on the roster. I can do that. That way we don't forget because we're going to five and that's a lot to memorize. Uh, Jared, what do you got? Uh, I'm going to take Annabelle off the board just because, <laughs> like, dude, haunted dolls. Absolutely not. Nope. Not you not guys going are, anywhere near it. You guys are so. I'm so glad I get. To, I'm the first one to get two because you guys are sleeping hard <laughs> on some of the um, on some of the good ones. I'm going Pennywise for my first pick. Um, uh, which Penny that is a that is a round one pick if I've ever heard one. Annabelle is Pennywise a, pound foolish. Annabelle is solid. Annabelle is solid. I'll give you that. What about but, the thing? 
the thing is also solid. Sorry, but the thing is probably better than Annabelle in terms of a, of a round one pick. And then I'm gonna go number two. But, but, Chucky is stuck in Maine, though. I'm going Chucky. So you go for dolls, like Jerry? Because Chucky yeah. is just funny as shit, uh, and he's he leans into the horror comedy uh, for sure. He's the he is the yeah. epitome of so bad it's good in a horror movie. He is the definition of so bad it's good. He's in a horror the movie. horror comedian. Yeah. Uh, Jared, you got next. I do. I, I need to make sure I remember this character's name. Um, their name is yes. Uh, I'm going to pick Neil Howey from The Wicker Man. Now, uh, wait, this wait. Be, wait. <laughs> this Neil be a, a controversial Howie. because he, he is the protagonist of the film. However, you're wait. telling me that they're going to this nice musical sex positive island, and we're supposed to root for the cop who's religious. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Absolutely okay. not. So I totally Absolutely not. Guys, I totally <laughs> forgot to bring this? this up. I totally <laughs> forgot to bring this up when we watched uh watched Midsommar, Midsommar that it's it is a kind of a remake of the original movie Wicker Man, which also has its own remake. Bees, not the bees, right? Uh, yeah. Which uh cuz yeah, the, so, uh, the remake was made by um uh, or starred Nicolas Cage, but the original is from like the 70s or 80s, right? Right. And it's it's very similar to Midsommar. Actually, might be worth uh being uh, on Better our watch, watch list because The Wicker Man. I wa- I watched it. It was very interesting. But uh, Neil Howie is. I don't know that you could define him as the villain, but we'll take it. That's gonna. Look, we'll look, see if look, that helps or hurts look, your list. Here. Look, look, here's the thing. Like protagonist and anti. Yes, he's the protagonist of the film. But again, like, <laughs> he, he he goes to this nice island where they're sex positive and they're singing songs all the time. And he is a religious cop. And he, that is true. So, who, who seems like the villain? <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, Tom, you get two picks now. I'm gonna say Jack Torrance. Which one's Jack ooh. Torrance? I'm always blank on names. He's, he's from The Shining. Oh, ooh, really good pick. Why am I blank? I knew Jack, and then you said Torrance, and it throws me off. Spell it like that. Uh, and then the It Follows monster. Oh, that's a creepy one, too. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say Danny McBride. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Jerry, go ahead. Your third pick. Okay, this one's this definitely a solid into, into horror adjacent because it's from a. Uh, <laughs> you guys are leaving so many. You guys are leaving so many tier one picks like drafts like off the li- like on the table. I'm also I'm also going for like personal taste. Like yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, I could be generic and just go Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger. I'm I'm gonna get a bit more personal than that. That's so fair. this is again this is ho- kind of horror adjacent and mainly of a, more of a sci-fi film. But uh, I'm gonna take the aliens from uh, War of the Worlds. Because these things terrified the hell out of me when I saw this movie Ooh. as a child. Because my grandma, who liked to show me scary things when I was a kid, showed me this. And <laughs> hearing the sound of these like unstoppable tripods just going through areas and decimating everything scared the shit out of me. And also, I remember because I remember I was like eight years old when I saw this film. The aliens came down in a thunderstorm with or, or a lightning storm with no thunder, and everyone's just pointing out, "Why is there no thunder?" And as a kid, I didn't really know what heat lightning was. And so if I ever saw lightning and heard no thunder, I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's happening. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But this movie scared me so much as a child that, like, to this day, it still freaks me out a lot. Well, then, if we're going – if listen, if we're playing No Holds Barred here, then I'm going to pull out the best ones yet, Tucker and Dale. Okay. Tucker and Dale the, versus again, evil. Protest, yes, but if you watch that movie, they are the horror. They are the ones that the campers are scared of. It's true. Okay. So, so <laughs> if anything, like they, are, I mean, like think about like these are the mo- these are the most relatable horror movie villains that to have ever existed. <laughs> Two guys just trying to refurbish their cabin in the woods, and, and and everyone's just making them the bad guy. Some could argue Michael Myers is in a very similar boat. You know, he's just trying to go back home and. People oh. just keep walking into his knife. He's just trying to get back to his house. Yeah, he's going home. I got <laughs> I got a good one. All right. I have what? Am I was that my third pick? Third. That was my yeah. third pick. Okay. Third. Um, see, I was so like you said, and this kind of made me, you know, revisit these because I do think that like we, I could be mentioning like some of the big ones, but I think that uh the one I'm going to mention is is going to be in my top five, and I think it is in Jared's list, which is why I'm bringing it up, because 
I want to start by saying this is a movie that we will 1000% be reviewing on this podcast <laughs> because I, exactly. I don't think I Tom has exactly seen it. Talking about. I don't think Tom has and seen I, it. I do have it on my list. I don't I don't think Tom has seen it. I don't think Noah's seen it. I don't think Mako's seen it. And it, Mako's seen it. Oh, okay, he's seen it. And it absolutely is one of the best horror movies I've ever watched for the know, so that, bad it's good category. And I'm going to take Gabriel really from Malignant. Oh, oh, what the heck is that? <laughs> it is a 2021 <laughs> horror movie, and it is the funniest uh, Harry Potter Sorcerer's Stone type shit that I've ever seen. <laughs> and I'm not gonna give I'm not gonna give context to that. If you've seen Malignant, you know. If you don't, you need to watch Malignant because we will absolutely next. Honestly, next time we come back to horror, that should be like top of the list next watch. Because if any movie has something to rant, has things to rant about, it's that movie. It's so <laughs> balls to the wall so it's like okay it's so bad it's good but it was written to be so bad it's good so okay. like so literally it's like, like it's, it's horror comedy but it's written as just a you think it's a bad horror but it was intentionally written as a bad horror so it's like it's and it does it perfectly i don't know how to describe it better it's one of my favorite hilarious. horror movies it's so it's good hilarious. it's so good yeah, I, th I thought you oh and mako has seen it because i i made him watch it <laughs> yeah <laughs> is... uh, and i distinctly remember just because i was at his apartment and i made him and taylor watch it and i was just watching the reactions the inside thing. but that's not what i thought you were talking about at first i thought you're talking about something else at first <laughs> tell us that oh, if, you, if no one picks it on the draft let me know but it's your pick uh okay is it my or, no, so it goes perfect. back, and then you'll get the last two. Yeah, picks yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I am going to again. This is this is one that you know may not be th thought of as a horror movie today, but when it came out originally, it was a horror movie. I'm oh, taking he's Bruce. always what? You're always stretching. Yeah, I'm, ta I'm taking Bruce the Shark from the first Jaws. movie. Oh, that was one that was kind of on my oh, list. His name is Bruce. Yeah, well, yeah, that's Bruce. What, that's what they named the animatronic, and there's something like, for, especially for the first two thirds in a movie where you never really see the it's, shark which it wasn't actually i mean it's kind of like didn't work it's hugely responsible for uh, like the, the america's fear of sharks like it is widely oh, responsible oh. for a, a, a literally yeah. Oh, yeah. national fear of an animal that probably but was now, not as it, like big it, it, yeah, wasn't like, the it, shark in finding Nemo also named bruce yeah yeah <laughs> is he named after that shark yeah. probably right probably yeah yeah but it's like if you are single-handedly like the worst PR campaign ever for a group of animals who are just living their lives and sometimes bite people when they go into their homes. Like, yeah, yeah I, I think you're an effective horror movie. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what you got, Tom? You got two picks. I get two picks. I think I'm going to pick uh, The Plants from Knowing. Isn't it called Knowing? Wait a minute. That the, is that uh, the Nick, is that Nick Nick no, you're Nick talking Kane? about the one knowing. Oh, is the you're one, talking about the happening. You're the talking happening. about the happening. The happening. That's <laughs> what it was. Yes. I'm picking. Oh, goes, what? Oh, no. plants. I have Wasn't one it just that plants, I, right? Yeah. Just plants. I have a. Plants. I have. I have two honorable mentions that I'm gonna. I'm gonna pop out if no one picks them. But yeah. I just changed my final answer. Actually. Yeah. Knowing was the one where like Nick Cage's character just like knows the dates of all these tragedies, including the end of the world. Yes. Yes, okay. which was also an interesting movie. Uh, all right. Uh, was that your last one, or did you do you still have one more? You have one more, right? I think I'm gonna pick one more. Uh, I'm gonna pick Jason's mom. She was the actual villain in the first <laughs> yes! movie. Yes, which so many people forget about. That like they just like icon iconized Jason as like the villain in the rest of the movies. Uh, because yeah. because out of nowhere at the end of that movie, the baby just fucking comes out of the out of the water and drags the girl in. Wait, really? Yes, I never saw it. I just the, know, so I Jason, Jason's mom is the villain that entire movie. And then at the very end, after the mom's been apprehended, they the the girl, like the final girl, is in the water on a rowboat. And out of there's like this like slow motion bloody child comes out of the water and pulls <laughs> her in. And it's like this like dramatic final moment of the movie where you're like, what the hell is going on here? Like this, <laughs> like this was she, he wasn't in the movie. He just was killed this last girl. It was really funny because uh, your guards down. Right. So it's like a jump scare, but it's a slow motion jump scare. So it's weird. Um, yeah, that was interesting. Anyway, uh, Jared, go ahead. <laughs> All right. For my final pick, for my final pick, I was gonna go with Ghostface from the Scream movies, but which is a great pick, is a great pick. I am uh, gonna go with my final out there pick. 
of uh, something that's technically not from a horror film, but it's definitely a horror. Um, uh-huh. I'm picking all the cats from the live action cat. <laughs> <laughs> Because you cannot watch that and tell me that's not the scariest fucking thing you've ever seen. <laughs> that's a Parents pick all the cats. That's a solid pick. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna actually go with mine, and this is one of the scariest. I think this is honestly one of the genuinely scarier, scarier concepts of horror movie villains. Um, in in like recent horror. Yeah, and Nathan Fielder. Nathan the Fielder. old. The- the old horny couple from X. <laughs> no, I haven't seen X yet. Um, I haven't seen that either. I'm going to go with the monsters in Bird Box because the you never Ooh. see them. And they so the whole idea is that they are like these cosmic horrors in, in they're very they yeah. sound very. Um, uh, what's the name? What's his name? Um, Cthulhu. Uh, Oh, uh, oh, oh, why? I'm now yeah, you're, you're making me forget. <laughs> so, hold on, let me, let me, H- let me. no, H, H, uh, R, uh, Lovecraft, Lovecraft. HP Lovecraft, yeah, it's very Lovecraftian because the idea of Lovecraftian horror, which by the way, uh, has been a lot of people actually don't like what heart look what Lovecraftian horror has become because HP Lovecraft was always very like these cosmic horrors were always scary in the sense that like you could not fathom what you're seeing. Everything was incomprehensible. And that's part of the horror element. Like it could cause you to go blind or like things like that. And this leans really heavy into that where it's like, it's beautiful. Like, and it calls you to kill. And it's like this, it makes you go insane. And I love that as a concept. Uh, I, so I think it's a really cool horror movie and a uh, character. And it does show like the epitome of how like, ambiguity really does make it scarier so i really do like that one uh, i had two honorable mentions before we kind of you guys decide uh we decide on the things but uh my two honorable mentions were the uh the like clicking monsters in uh in the new the quiet place the quiet place and, i had that and know. the vampires in i am legend uh which they are vampires they are vampires oh uh, i have an honorable mention that. i have an honorable mention religion from midsummer <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. that's good it's a solid pick uh so let's just go through our list really quick uh and then uh we'll you guys can let us know in the comments uh or yeah just let us know in the comments on youtube if you watched who you think wins if you're listening on spotify you can leave us a five-star review and write it there uh it really means a lot uh let's give the fives and you can let us know who wins uh in the comments uh for mine i had uh pennywise i believe i had uh, can you help? Chucky. Chucky. You got for Burke, Pennywise, Chucky, Tucker and Dale from Tucker and Dale <laughs> yes, versus yes. Evil. Gabriel Gabriel from Malignant and the Bird Box Monsters. For Jared, he had Annabelle, Neil Howie from Wicker Man, <laughs> that, like, the hero of the story. The, hero of that the, story. Pro- the protagonist of the story. <laughs> okay, the protagonist. <laughs> uh, the world. Um, the, the War of the Worlds world. Aliens. Uh, Bruce, the shark for Jaws, every cat for cats. <laughs> That's a good one. And then I had the thing from the thing, Jack Torrance from The Shining, the It Follows monster, Plants from The Happening, and Jason's mom from the original <laughs> Friday the 13th. Fr- it's a pretty good list you guys let us know yeah. uh in the comments who you think won that uh yeah. i think obviously I, mine. yeah i clearly had the most well-rounded but uh you know you can pick whichever one you want uh <laughs> let us know uh if you did like the episode uh next week's gonna be on the emoji movie we're gonna have a, a remember a companion video to this one on halloween ends uh with at least jared and i uh potentially mako and potentially tom on here because i know mako also saw it i think um yeah let us know what you think and please leave a five star review on spotify it means a lot if you know someone that might enjoy this type of content share it out with them and uh definitely stick around for future episodes it does uh mean a lot for us and we're really enjoying this we want to keep making them and uh yeah it's been a lot of fun so do all the things click all the buttons uh, uh share it and, with people. and jared i can't i can't say the closing arguments he wrote uh i think i would prison yeah, yeah, you so, shouldn't read. You shouldn't read his art. Yeah, I, I saw that those. in the script, and I yeah, definitely not. The end is the written. The end here is written in blood. Yeah, he was well, saying something. He, he wanted us to reenact he, the scene, and he was trying. He, 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 yeah, he feel, seems like you feel really strongly about. This. Yeah, this is like he says well, something in here. Michael Myers enters, and I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's behind you. Oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> Truly, the only way to end this uh, particular episode is with um, cold quotes. The, the great, the, the great, the great quotes from Halloween Kills: "Evil dies tonight." Yeah, and if you think our and podcast, if you think our podcast is bad, then uh, wait till you see Halloween ends. Wait until you see Halloween ends. Halloween ends.